Okay, first things first, my name is Kenneth Bird. I'm the creator of Supreme Ambulite Rejection Screen Paint using Ambulite Rejection Technology Gain. Before we start this video demonstration, I do want the Crow Boys to learn to relax. Stop getting so stressed out, stop getting so passionate. And uh, refrain from the uh, childish um, uh, name calling and all the other things you do. Okay, keep it professional. All right, so um, going to father this a few tests and demonstrations here. We're not really tests. It's not really tests. We've done all this stuff already before. What we're going to do in this demonstration is we have uh, some sample sheets here, or some high performance screens, and we have uh, the UB mix here. All right. Now, the reason why this is being done is because we're going to nip this in the butt when it comes to the new technology we're launching on, um, on the first. So we don't have any other. We have to test this, and he has to test that. We're going to do it, we're going to do it here for him. This right here is the coating that we developed, as you look at it, and I told you it's strange looking. This is the coating we developed for the new roll-ons. This is the roll-on technology we developed. It's the same thing as the spray-on. They have the same things for this one. Rolls on, cannot be used on um, plexiglass. It's not rear projection anymore. It does have that low lumen technology in it, but I want you to look at this stuff. So you can get a good understanding. This is why we code them like this, so it makes it virtually impossible for anyone to tamper with the product. Now, see, if this thing was, uh, you're going to look at it and say, well, that's not a great screen. Oh, yeah, it is a great screen. It's definitely a great screen. It just has a code in it that allows us to be able to change the color, but it doesn't alter the picture. You can't figure that one out. You get a, get a small degree. I don't have a big degree in chemistry, but I know a few things about chemicals and how it works. So I know how to basically change the code of a color but basically do not alter or change basically the performance of the product. Hmm. So basically for a signature code, which is in here. So that signature code allows us to be able to see if someone's mimicking our product. Now, if you were to basically try to design the same thing, you would have the same picture performance. Trust me, we tested all that stuff when we were developing this stuff. Whatever codes we drop in here, we have to make sure it doesn't disrupt the picture quality. All right, so this right here is the UV mix, UV mix right here. And as you can see, it is his product. That's a signature right there. That is his stuff right there. Now, we're doing this because some of you say, oh, well, you're going against them. No, no, no. Look at this. Come on, people. First things first, you don't complain when he goes against us, but you complain when we go against him. So, come on. Grow up. All right. So, right here, we have the Cinema Grade 5D, which you don't see them complaining. Uh, we have the, and this is toward the Crow Boys when I say this, we have a Daylight Pax, and this is all the stuff we test our screens when we have to, Dark Star 9, and then this is the UB Mix right here. Now I'm going to show you something. One of the interesting things that our black technology has the ability to do, it has the ability to mimic a screen, which means it can blend into a screen pretty, pretty easy. Now I've done this demonstration with more higher performance projection screens, but we're going to do this on this. So keep in mind, this is much lighter than my screen. Let me get something to block the projector so you can get the full effect of this. And we're going to be doing this. That right there is actually the roll-on version of a black silver. So first things first, let's cover the projector over. So you can see the two difference in the screens. And I have to make sure the back of this is dry because I don't want it to mark my screen. So we'll put that right there. In the center. Now you look at it, you can see that both screens are not the same color, right? Told you, blacks can mimic screens. The only problem you see with that mix is the fact that, see where the contrast levels are supposed to be here? It's supposed to be a dark area right there in the core reef. You can't pick it up, the screen won't pick it up because it can't produce enough contrast. But when it comes to color, our screen can mimic his technology. Easy. See that? But the screen can't pick up contrast. That's why when I sat there and saw the started laughing. I was that's a black screen you're going against. A jet black screen. Eights were black, but they weren't this black. These screens are seriously just jet black screens. All right, like I said, this is in no way to put this individual down. So I'm gonna put other sample sheets against there too. 
Like I said, you know, we test everybody out. We have to. There's no way I can come in there and somebody's going to say, hey, okay, I own this screen. And they got the money to pay for it. They got the money to spend four or five grand for a screen. They got it. So show me something that'll keep me from putting $5,000 into this projection screen. Show me some proof. And I have to show them that proof. So that's why we collect some of these sample sheets. Just about everything we get our hands on. So I'm finding screens that are dark enough to compete with this thing because only screen I've seen that came close to a black screen is an XY. We've seen one of those. We are, we're, in, we're in the process of getting one of those, getting those XY screens. We're going to get one of those over here. All right, we have a gray cinema. I may have to redo the sticky tape on this. I'm pretty sure I do. I got some sticky tape over there I brought. We got a gray cinema 5D right here. We're going to stand in front of this so you can see the screens. Now this screen is not going to pick up contrast at all. So next to this black technology and the projector I'm using this demonstration, it's going to get whitewashed. Because it can't pull high enough contrast level. But we'll get close up on it so you can see it. Alright. Let's go with the Dark Star 9. Which is the flagship of Elite Screens. Uh, we'll put this one right here at the bottom. Put them all in the center. All right, there we go. Now, Dark Star 9 is going to have a better chance of pulling up on a black screen because the Dark Star 9 is one of the darker screens made by Elite Screens. That's a $3,000 screen sitting right there in the center. Oops. Let me get some more sticky tape for this. Let me put you on the what you call I'm gonna redo all my sticky tapes. It's gonna make a difference. I think we'll get it done real quick. And that right there, remember I've been doing all this demonstration, low entry level projectors. That's what that technology looks like being hit with 4,000 lumens. Because in most of the demonstrations, I was testing off all that particular screen paint. I was just using um, I was just using um uh, low entry level projectors, but a few people are curious what would happen if I hit that paint with a 4,000 lumen projector. That's what you get right there. It's just like they look, just like I said, all these screens look like TVs. Now, I'm going to be working, contacting Comcast uh, probably today. I'm going to be getting my um, an advancement on my Wi Fi, which will allow me to be a business class. It's going to cost me a little more money, but it'll allow me to get crystal clear streams because I need to invest the money into that. Because I do a lot of screens, look at the screens that just dropped off my screen. They don't want to sit against that thing. It's a black screen. These screens are lighter than my screens. They should be producing much brighter, better images. Like I said, white levels is sometimes not a good thing. A white level, high white level for a screen can be a very bad sign that that screen can't pull contrast. And I said I had a conversation with a fellow who had an amazing setup. Gaming setup was amazing. It was a beautiful, but, but the screen, when he wanted to turn it on and show off the Xbox logo, it was faded, it was washed out. And I was like, my man, you need, you got your setup, it's amazing, but you really need to get yourself a better screen, like a black screen. And when I showed him my Xbox logo flashing up on that 135 downstairs, he was, he, he was sold. He was sold. What's the point? See, when, the only way he could show off his screen, the performance of his screen, he had to be in the dark. Which means all those collectibles, all those beautiful trinkets that he collected, nobody could see them. The screen was sitting in the dark. Where's the other one at? Oh, Dark Star 9. The dark stuff. Now I here. Let's get falling off. There we go. We should be pretty good now. Now, like I said, the screens are going to pull off a much higher white level than our technology because our screen. Keep in mind, and people keep forgetting that part. We have a jet black screen. All right, jet black screens are going to produce. A lower white level, but a much higher uh, black level. Now, when it comes to doing a 100% white screen, which I ordered one, we have one coming in. We're going to do that against the gray screens and showing them next to a white screen in snow levels, which, like I said, another thing voided by a lot of these screens out there. They're not going to show you that at all, period. I'll show you. It's not a problem. 
All right, let's go over here and let's pull up a contrast with some goldfish. So the background of this demonstration is jet black. It just shows the goldfish moving back and forth. That's all. Screens are supposed to pull black. So that background should be jet black. I just does not want to step. Let me get me a bigger piece because the, the curl mix is not staying up there. Let me grab something, a much bigger piece to see if we can get that to stay up there. Okay. We'll cut a piece off like that. It's got to stay now. Oh, great. They just don't want to stay to the screen. Really don't want to stay up there next to that screen. And I got them pressed right in the middle of the bar. They just don't want to stay up there. They don't want to be up there. Let's try you again. Let's keep you right here. Where's that bar at? Right there in the middle of the bar. And press again. Put you up there. Let's put a bigger piece, bigger piece on you, so you can stay up there, and then we'll put another piece at the bottom for you, so that way you can't go anywhere. All right, now they're not going anywhere. So there's the goldfish moving back and forth right there. Now I know a lot of the demonstrations are done in the dark. That's why I had to be up early in the morning to do this because. We know that these things would not be able to produce an image. And that's what you're getting on from the lights. We need all the lights on here. I forget how bright this place is. As I said before, you're not seeing black. When you look at these screens, you're actually seeing a shade of gray. So that's what you're picking up. Shades of gray. There we go. Shades of dark gray. Now, in order for these screens to have a somewhat good contrast level, you would have to be in the dark. Can't use them when the light's on. Now, for somebody to say, okay, my product is not ambient light rejection, two of these technologies are ambient light rejection, which are elite screens. One said it's not ambient light rejection. Ambient light rejection is very important. It's a serious requirement needed for home theater setups. I know people that will not touch a screen unless it's ambient light rejection. It's like you getting a, um, a PS5 and yours has a cartridge slot in it. And then you're saying, no, you don't need, you don't need this. You don't need, you don't need a disc. You don't need downloads. You just need a cartridge slot. You wouldn't go near that with a 10-foot pole. You want the latest technology, which means you would get a screen that has ambient light projection technology embedded into it. So get up closer on the screen so you can see that this is black. Now, we'll turn our lights on. Told you, with the lights out, you get shades of dark grays. That's what you get. Any light comes on in that environment, that screen's automatically going to basically show its true colors. I love to show the basic colors. This is very important when you show up a screen, you gotta show up straight colors to show exactly which screen produces the more darker reds. Now, as I told you before, that our technology has the ability to be able to mimic just about anything that it hits. Let me see. We're going to go over here. We're going to switch over 
to, as a matter of fact, let me go back to my fish demonstration so we can finish our little, our mimic, mimic it to the screen. As you can see, like I told you, the technology has the ability to be able to mimic. Oh, by the way, here. Look at that. See that interesting how my black screen can mimic it to a screen that's lighter than it. Easily. Pretty interesting, is it? How can a screen that dark... My, my screen's jet black. How can a screen that dark mimic itself into all those other screens? Because the white level on the screen is extremely high. That's why. It can mimic into the mix. It can mimic into a... This is a gray Cinema 5D, which is much lighter than my screen. And then you have a dark Star 9. But we can mimic their technology. Now, when it comes to contrast levels, which this screen has a lot of contrast in it. And as you can see, when we get up on the fish, you will see... That the black levels are here, when it gets to here, it turns gray. They can't mimic, this one can do it better because this is a dark star nine, but this screen right here, it can't mimic that contrast level. So it's be dark there, dark there, they can't, they can't mimic it, it can't pick it up. No gray screen will ever match black technology, none. It, would, it can't do it, I'm sorry. The screen can produce contrast levels, and on top of that our technology produces a high white level. Now, any area that flashes black will come up gray if the screen can't produce contrast. There you go, you see it? Any area that shows a black level, a gray screen will automatically produce a gray level. It can produce the colors, but our technology can produce colors too. Now that's a black screen that's mimicking a gray screen. Now we have gray technology. What do you think that stuff will do to a gray screen? Let me show you. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Before we, we leave from there. Only the commercials are running. I want you to see it. This is what you're supposed to see when you see demonstrations. Not a bunch of colors constantly flashing across the screen. You're supposed to see that contrast level. This is what they refuse to show you. See how the reds are faded out right there? Image is supposed to be darker. That's why I showed you the solid reds first, solid blues. Now, keep in mind, for those who basically want to be centered squared on this, as I said, this is why we have other sample sheets up there. This is not about just one thing. It's the two other screens up there which we're displaying. So you can see it. But you need to see it on a larger scale, what you're actually getting. And this is from expensive technology down to handmade technology. That it does not have the this contrast and how our screens can actually mimic the image.
this is what makes our technology different from anything out there on the market because we can produce images in fully lit environments without the screen washing out or fading. And this is a 4000 lumen projector. If your screen can't pull a bright enough image, well, contrast has nothing to do with it. If your projector is 4000 lumen, that doesn't make a difference. You're not going to pull contrast. If you can't, you can't, you just can't do it. All right, now, showed you contrast levels. We can show you a star field if you want. We know how that one's going to end up, the star field. Let's uh, pull out some really bright colors from the door. Let's show you our technology mimicking to a screen that are, the screens that are much lighter than our tech. We're able to blend into the screen. Now keep in mind, if our technology was so dark and so dirty, this image would be much brighter. Our screen would be so dark you couldn't, be, you couldn't even see it. So yeah, we're able to blend into the technology with no problem whatsoever. Even with the UP mix. That's the UP mix right there. I'm going to go back and show you again. So you can see, because our screen is supposed to produce such a dark, dirty image. But I'm showing you. A lot of questions. Those of you who brought these products, a lot of questions for you. You have a lot of questions to ask. How is it possible our black technology producing an image that bright against a screen that's supposed to be having the ability to be able to produce an image that's much brighter than our tech? But yet none of these screens can produce contrast. We can produce contrast and white levels at the same time. I think he quit it for the day. Hold on for a minute. Let's put him back up because we're not done yet. We are not done yet. If you don't do the demonstrations correctly, I will do them for you. That's what I tell you. I, I get tired of it. You have to do these demonstrations correctly. When I do demonstrations against these high performance screens, it must be done correctly. You know why? Because if I do anything incorrectly, I can get hit with a lawsuit. That's why. Understand? All right. But it has to be done correctly. So Crow Boys, I need for you to be here in the room to watch this. You always avoid these particular demonstrations, and I need you in here to watch this. So you can see we have not only just his, but several high-performance screens that are sitting among the, on the wall. There's a science when it comes to technology. That's why I have a black screen that can blend into his screen or any other mother high performance screens with no problem but produce contrast at the same time. <coughs> That's not some call It's not to be rude or disrespectful, it's to show the truth. You know, you have to do the demonstrations there. They have to be done correctly. You can't cut corners, you can't have screens sitting in certain dark environments and all that stuff. You can't do that. It has to be done correctly. If you don't do them correctly, your results are going to be pretty bad. So we have a dark star nine at the top. We have a gray cinema 5D in the middle, and we have a UV mix in the bottom half of the screen. Right there. There would be sure some pretty nice, pretty colors right there. Let's go with some beautiful butterflies, some bright colors. Let's go with some beautiful, let's see if we can sort of relaxing, I think kind of relaxing 
relaxing butterflies. Relaxing, relaxing. As long as I never find this video what I want to see you. See? Relaxing butterflies is what we want. Colors in there. Here we go. So to keep this fair, so we're not basically singling one person out. We have everybody on the board. Well, actually, not everybody. We have everybody. The whole board has been covered with sample sheets. Now, just to show you, that is what it is, because some people are saying, well, that might not be what it's product. It is. We have some of it right there. I'll roll a little bit out on the screen. We'll dry it, and we'll see. Watch it blend. Now, you can see that our screen is producing high white levels. And here we are, again, UV Mix, Gray Cinema 5D, Dark Star 9. Well, we don't have to use this straight contrast. That's the one thing I don't like. When I watch demonstrations, when people do demonstrations, they will show constantly bright colors. They won't go near contrast because they know that's where our screen is basically at its strongest. But I can show you bright colors right now. We're not doing any contrast demonstrations at the moment. I told you that when it comes to our technology, our white levels will be a tad low, but nothing that is going to disrupt your picture quality where the screen is going to be so dark that you can't even see it. There we go. Every time that screen changes over, it, it's going to mimic. It's going to actually mimic the image. Now I'm doing all this live because if I did this pre-recorded, I would be accused of, of basically uh, tampering with the, the, the video or whatever. So all this is being live. You can see it for yourself. So hold on for a minute. Let's pause right here. Let's pause right there. Now, right there, you can see it for yourself. I don't know where the crow boys at. Never around. We'll do this demonstration again. Crow boys. I'm going to do this demonstration again early in the morning. Maybe early morning. It's 4 o'clock in the morning. You guys are probably asleep right now. I get up early in the morning anyway. But we're going to do this demonstration again strictly on the black screen. We're going to take the UV mix and several of the high performance screens. I'm going to come in here. We're going to do this again so we can get everybody in here to watch the demonstration again. Because I want you to see this. This is going to be posted everywhere. Live, it's going to be Twitter, Facebook, the whole nine yards. It's going to be posted everywhere. How we have a jet black screen that's blending in to a UB mix right there, Gray Cinema 5D right there, Dark Star 9 with no problem. Now, like I said, since I'm doing this live and you're watching this demonstration, that means any demonstration that anyone has ever did against our company stating that our technology was so dark that you couldn't see it, falsified their demonstrations. Like I said, I don't have the ability to manipulate space and time. My name is not Thanos. As I snap my hands, you see at the same time, I just saw it. This is live. And you're looking at a screen, black screen that is producing an image bright enough to be able to blend into screens that are much shader than it. And one at the bottom is a UV mix by Crow. We're not using any heavy contrast demonstrations because my black screen in contrast levels is superior. No one's going to be able to pull that contrast level. We're using bright, beautiful colors. You do know that if we were in court right now and I did this demonstration, you know what the outcome would be right now? Do you have any idea? 
let me explain something real quick. I don't want to tamper this video too much, but Mr. Crow, you do understand that when we go to court, you do know that I'm going to do this exact same video in court. What's your product? It's, been, it's going to be ordered again. We have proof of sales receipt from our PayPal debit card. Um, we can go ahead and get a sales receipt that we did purchase the product. We have the address where it came from with tracking numbers. It is your product in that room. If we go to court, and we probably we will go to court, and I do the same demonstration, you got to have to answer to a lot, my friend. You got to answer to a lot, my friend, right now on the internet, how you went out and you did these demonstrations displaying my product being so dark that it couldn't produce an image. And yet, not only am I sitting next to your screen, but I'm sitting next to two other high-performance professional screens that are certified. And we're not showing star field demonstrations, no dark contrast, nice, beautiful, bright colors. And yet, I'm mimicking your technology right now. So you have a lot to answer for on how in the world we have a screen here that is supposed to pull up an image so dark that you can't see it, but we're all watching it live that it is pulling an image. Nice and bright. And not only that, matching your screen very, very, very close. You got a lot of explaining to do. Not only here with everybody on the internet, but in court, pretty soon. So, we did... I don't have any of these companies here coming against my company telling me, Hey, your stuff is dark, we can't even see it. No, 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 only you do this stuff. And friend would say, oh, but it's a little slightly, it's a gray screen next to a jet black screen. Let's not forget that one and how high the bright levels are on that black technology that's laying against the screen or any of the other ones. any other company that did the exact same thing let's say if BMP Supernova did the same thing to me right now yeah I'll be doing the exact same thing I'll be taking their sample sheet and stick it against my screen and say hey look how did your demonstration come out this way we came out that way I'm mimicking your screen on a black on black technology And we're using a Chrissy 4000 lumen projector, so there's no excuse about not having enough power. And for any of these screens, there's no excuse. See how the background comes up black? Look at the red. I told you that when it comes up red. I told you when I showed you the solid colors, not just his, all these other screens react the same way. When we test our screens, we don't test them against another black screen at the, at the when we first start developing. We test them against screens that are lighter than our screens. We have to see how bright the levels we can pull up out of that black technology. Any area that shows black on the screen will come up gray on a black screen. I'm sorry, on a gray on a white, on a gray screen. Because it can't produce the contrast. I hate to bring court into this, I really do, but I did give you fair warning. I gave you plenty of fair warning to calm it down. I did. Now, if any one of these companies right here did the same thing to me, we'd be in the court. Because they would have to prove that my technology did not perform the way it was supposed to perform. Like I said, we're going to do this again around, uh, we're going to do it probably around 8 in the evening. That way I think the crow boys will be home from work and about, out and about, and we can do that demonstration there. Uh, 
that's going to do it. I think I'm the only one who gets up this early. Well, actually, everybody gets up early in the morning. I'm sorry, they got a family from the military. Half of them are already up and out the door already. They've been up. They've been up around 2, two o'clock in the morning. They're out. Probably either jogging or running and doing something. Now, you think a black screen can mimic this technology? What do you think a gray screen under our technology coding will do? I could identically match your screen perfectly in any other screen. Not only your screen, I can do a DMP supernova. I can do a black diamond if I wanted to. I can mimic a black diamond easily. Because if I can do it on a black screen, a gray screen is far more easier to do to mimic colors, to mimic a screen. And I could do it with a coating that looks completely different from their technology. Now, it'd be different if the screen paint was gray. Mine was gray. And their screen paint were gray or their screens were gray. That's a different story. But mine's not gray. Mine's kind of a purplish kind of red color. So how do you get a chemical that's purplish red to produce an image that's gray? It comes out looking gray that can produce an image that can mimic another screen. I told you, man, you're in a whole different world of technology, man. We're not on the same level, buddy. We're not. We're just not. I'm sorry, but we're just not. It's the way it is. So, as you saw in that demonstration there, right? This is the great technology we developed, right? So a black screen mimicked this screen with no problem. What do you think great technology would do that we develop? This is a UB mix. And mimic your technology that quick. I can mimic it, make it even better than what it is. Let me show you something. Now, if I stand in front of the screen, if you look at them, you're going to think, oh, they're both gray, right? Looking at them real closely. All right, you think they're both gray. Now, let's come over here. Let's take my screen completely off the wall. And let's stick it over here. Against the screen, because my screen looks dark, right? But if I stand in front of my projector, I don't want this poking my screen, they're not the same color. Your screen's actually darker than mine. So how is it possible that I can mimic your, the technology? See, this is the things we know how to do. I can mimic any screen, but we did, the screens would look completely different. Nothing like each other, but we can mimic because that's smart technology that we developed. It's a science behind it. The science to be able to manipulate light and color. Once you start learning to study that, because that's what you need to do. These companies out here need to start studying more about physical light and color, how it reacts to light. You figure out that code, you can pretty much mimic any screen on the market and they'll look completely different. Your screen's darker than mine. Right? But we can mimic it. That fast, that quick, and make it far more advanced. This is not even your technology, and I'll tell you why. Now, for those of you who want to sit there and say, well, that could be his product right there. No, 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 no. This is the part that we basically shake you a little. I'm going to show you what our code looks like. That's the code of a roll on black silver. This is gray paint. See the difference between the two? Now, this technology has a special code in it that allows it to be able to come up one color but produce another color and another color, three and one. 
which means it can basically, when being hit with black and black uh, um, contrast on the projector, the screen mimics and becomes darker. When it's basically being hit with white colors, it mimics and becomes brighter. But the color code itself looks nothing like a gray screen paint, where this one does and this one doesn't. Interesting, isn't it? But yet, this technology can mimic that technology with no problem. Not only can it mimic this technology, but it can mimic the, um, the, um, the Great Cinema 5D. It can mimic the Dark Star 9. It can mimic a DMP Supernova. This technology is gray. But it doesn't look gray, does it? But it is. I would do the same thing if any company told me that we were the same thing, I would prove to them they were not. Not just you, any company that sits there and says, oh, we are the same. No, we don't. You know why that code is important? I'll tell you why. Say if I design a gray screen, right? Say I mimic a, uh, a DMP supernova, right? DMP Supernova decides that they're going to take me to court because they said I basically stole their technology and I mimicked their technology, right? They could say that, right? But I could go into court and I could show them... Come on now, get out of here. I could show them an entirely different chemical with an entirely different color that doesn't even match their product in any way whatsoever. They've already lost their case that quick. Because one does not look like another, but the other one has the ability to mimic another. On top of that, keep people from basically doing false demonstrations against us, too. Now, if you thought a black screen, our black technology had the ability to be able to mimic a screen with it being twice as, um, twice as uh, um, uh, dark as these screens, what do you think our gray technology would be able to do? So, I'll show you. So what we're going to do is to keep this fair. Let's get the Dark Star 9, which we're going to need for this demonstration, which is very important. We'll put this right here on the side. Pretty sure we, the sticky is pretty good on this. All right, with that Dark Star 9. All right, it will take a... Oh, i stuck. We'll take a Gray Cinema 5D right there. Put that right there on the side. Now we've got three high professional screens. Oh, we need a DMP supernova. We definitely need that. Where's the DMP supernova at? I don't need to have that simple sheet. Are we need it upstairs? It might be on the table. It might be on the table. I mean, it's probably on the table. That's where it's at on the table. Okay. We definitely need that. Oh, we got a matinee silver, too. Woo! Which one did you use? Matinee silver! All right, I'm going to take the matinee silver. I'll do the matinee silver next. I'll do that one next. We'll do that one next. We'll that's interesting. I definitely want to see what that matinee sort of looks like. Sorry, this is me in the morning when I get up. Is he talking to himself? Yes, I am. I am talking to myself. This is usually me basically trying to figure out exactly which sample sheet I want to do, whether I want to do the packs. So see, look at this. See? This is what I'm trying to figure out the which ones I want to use. I haven't figured out which one. So that's a I'm definitely going to do that. We're definitely going to do that one. Definitely. I like doing the demonstrations in the one. So we're definitely doing that one. But I want to do the DMP Supernova right here. This is what I want to do next, right there. Right there. I get excited over this stuff, man. I get excited for the fact of testing against a screen that has uh, a much, you know, it's been tested, it's been certified, you know. It's going to give me a run for my money. Let's see, let's put that. Well, now we're going to have to move everything over because we just got everything all scrunched together here. So we're going to have to move this over here. And then we're going to have to take the DMP Supernova and stick it right there so we have enough room. Now, DMP Supernovas are very bright screens. And that is, yeah, that's a Dark Star 9 right there. All right, so we got everybody up against the board. All right, and this, we're going to be using this on the, uh, this is going to be on that, um, that uh, black silver, the roll-on. Now, the reason why we're doing these demonstrations is just to get them out of the way because we know... Uh, sooner or later, this, this gentleman is going to come up and try to do these demonstrations also. So we're going to beat you to the punch. And we're going to do it for you. And we're going to do it the correct way. The way it should be done. Not half of our screen sitting in all this ambient light. And your screen over here sitting in the dark. Are you doing these, uh, these um, 
these, de these uh, weird demonstrations. Now, if Elite Screens were to test out my technology, everything would be done by the book. Both screens would be sitting in tons of ambient light. Both screens would be hit with different forms of projectors. Yeah, it'd be one of those. I've been through this before already. Not Elite Screens, but another company, some contract. We have a company that contacted us and wanted to do these tests against our technology. So let's go with this one first. I think this is backyard. Yes, it's backyard. So let's bring it up a little closer to the screen. We got sound with this one. Oh, I forgot the other one's sound card for the sound bar. So we're showing the contrast levels. Wait, let me just end the video. Yeah, we just end the video. Sorry, I forgot. Let me just play that video. Right on through. We go right in. Okay, there we go. see contrast levels I told you if we mimic this screen on a black screen what do you think would happen if we hit it with a gray screen well can't really call it gray it's kind of a um, I don't know what you would call it but as you can see it's two different forms of formulas but yet we can basically mimic anything So I told you and I warned you, I would not do a side by side next to this technology. Trust me, you don't want to do that. But we're doing it for you so you can see what happens. And over here we're using a 4000 lumen Chrissy right here. Another 4000 lumen Chrissy right here. I told you I don't do these bad boys. So we're going to do that demonstration for you to show you what will happen if you take your technology and you stick it against this technology, it'll mimic your screen just like that. Now you see that how his screen, the UB, came out a bit faded. It's not producing a red level next to a screen that is gray. Because our technology, even the black silver as being a gray screen, can produce because the contrast level in black silvers are pretty much pretty high. All right, but as you can see, his screen is actually lighter than my screen. All these screens are actually, actually to tell you the truth, yeah, a few of these are actually are lighter than my screen. Um, but the UV mix is basically, um, as you can say, uh, darker than my screen, which should be picking up a, a, a more brighter red, but it's not. Because what happens is when you have a screen that has too much of a black level in it, it's called oversaturation of a contrast level, which means the screen's black level is so high it's making the screen dark. That's why the red isn't as bright as red as ours. You can have too much contrast in the screen, as you can also have too much of a white level in the screen. It has to be a perfect balance. And the projector we're using is a 4000 lumen Chrissy projector at 720p. All right, let's see if we do better with blue. We'll do a blue screen next. You should do very well with white. You should do very well with white. You all those should do very well with white to tell you the truth. So I'm gonna pull up a solid blue screen. Told you. This contrast level is too high. White levels are too. Now these screens right here, 
their white levels are way too high. Right here, it's kind of weird. It's kind of like, uh, what's the word for it? It's like, the, it's like a mixture of white. That's definitely white and black paint. I can tell by looking at it. I'm sorry. I can tell by looking at it. This doesn't, I can tell exactly what it is. We tested all this stuff already. The reason why I know this stuff is because I've tested all this stuff already. Do you have any different different forms? People don't understand, like behind camera, when I'm working on this stuff, do you have any different, how many different forms of combinations that I have designed to try to make a screen close to any of the screens I've ever developed? People ever think about that? That's the reason why we could throw screens up against our screens and they don't match. Our screens will perform higher because I literally have to make products that we'll never sell. It's just junk stuff that we're just testing, throwing stuff randomly together to make something that would come close to blending into one of our texts. I know what that is from the door just by looking at it. Let's go to, um, but like I said, I just need to keep my mouth shut. That's what I need to do is keep my mouth shut, I'm talking too much. I am talking too much. So I know what I see when I see it. Now we're perfecting a black background. The screen's coming up dark gray. It's going to produce a better contrast than some of these screens because the screen is gray. But other than that, it's coming up a kind of a gray. Let's go in. The colors are not coming up correctly at all, period, which they should. But we can still mimic the tech with no problem. Well, ours is coming up good. Um, let's do a um, a gray screen. We're going to do a white screen, too, because that's very important to do all those colors. We have to put everything in there. We know that we're not shying away from nothing at all, period. So let's do a gray screen. Slightly off on this gray screen. The other screen did not pick it up at all. We have a white screen here. Let's do a white screen. There we go. Let's do a dark gray, dark green. No, I mean a dark green. Dark green. Now keep in mind, black screens can do the same thing on all this technology as our gray screens can. And they're black. Let's go over to uh, dark. We need a dark, 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 dark green screen. There we go. Ugh, I'm not showing that video. Let's stand over here real quick and look at this. Ugh. You ever hear my Christie's clicking? That's because that projector automatically calibrates. Automatically will calibrate the projector. Green screen, all right. So keep in mind, we're mimicking this tech on a screen that's a completely different color. Because someone said, like, "Oh, but this screen looked really good next to yours." No, our screen—if you look at them—they're not exactly gray. They're gray, but they're not gray. And my screen, his screen is darker than my screen, and I'm mimicking the screen. Actually, I'm blending in and matching the screen. But it doesn't do well when it comes to red. That's the problem. It can't pull red. See that? Certain colors it can pull, but it can't pull red. The red comes out faded. And it's not pulling blue. It's coming out of the sky blue. Let's go over to mimicking the screens. Let's pull up a 4K fish. I like to do 4K fish first. Do 4K fish first. 4K fish. 
This is against all these screens, not just one. We're going against all of them. All right. So we have uh, where's the DMP supernova? DMP supernova is in the middle right there. Now we're going to mimic the screen. That is a DMP supernova we we're mimicking. There is the UV mix, if you can see it. Mimic is tech. Told you, we can mimic any screen we want. Now, you notice something when we did the color patterns. Notice how these screens came up really, really light, all right? Because these screens had a too high of a white level. Uh, this screen right here, I, I, I know what it is automatically from the door. I can tell what it is. I'm not going to tell you what it is because I shouldn't have said it to begin with because that's kind of wrong. I do apologize for that one. But I can tell what it is automatically from the door, the way it's reacting because we tested this stuff before. Now, as you see, this screen right here is a gray screen, as you can see. This is the black screen. If you don't like it with this demonstration, if you don't like it. See what I mean? Told you we can mimic the tech easily. That's a black screen right there. You're watching. Black screen. Boom. See that? Pretty interesting, isn't it? So, of course, like I said, gray screen is a cakewalk. We can mimic any one of these high-tech screens we want. On a black screen, even more impossible to do, but we can do it. And I'm showing you, you be mixed against a black screen. Now see the color, see the what you come see it doesn't pick up too well, I told you. It has a problem picking up. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over here and we'll show you again, but We'll show you on the end of the black screen. Mimic the screen that fast on a black technology. Right up close so you can see it. Now let's put the lights on. What do you think would happen if I drop these lights? Can't even see it. The screen is gone. And that's black technology alone by itself. This is DMP Supernova. I'm not dressed today, so that's why I'm kind of not walking in front of the camera. So that's a DMP Supernova. Gone. That's a $5,000 projection screen. Right there, as you can see, we mimicked it that fast on a black screen. Turn the lights on. The only way that screen is going to be to see it, the contrast that was pulled. Let me show you the difference in lightness in the screens. What else do we have here? Let's go over to our red colors. Red screen. Here our screen is producing a bright red. Screens are faded. Let's bring in a blue screen. Showing solid blue. Our right, screen brings in a solid blue. Not a faded, not a washed out blue, a solid blue. Let's go to uh, dark green. Oh good, we got a commercial, that's fantastic. So you can watch that too. 
Once you see everything. There we go, it's dark green. Let's mimic the technology and let's blend the screen. Let's go with an LG demonstration. We'll bring up, uh, let me see, something nice and bright with beautiful flowers. Let's go with uh, this one right here. See that? It has no contrast. The black level, black screen is going to pull 100% contrast. You're going to see more detail in the flower. Right there, you're seeing the faded image. Both screens. Let's pull up, uh, let me see. Sony's black contrast. This is a black contrast demonstration. Showing the black levels of the screen. The only way these screens would have a fair chance is you would have to be in the dark, which I'm going to prove to you right now. The reason why a lot of these demonstrations are done in the dark because any kind of ambient light hits the screen, reflects off the screen, especially if it doesn't have ambient light rejection technology, you're going to have to be in the dark. So this is what your environment would look like. You would have to keep as much light as you possibly can away from the screen itself because that would cause the screen to basically start to show... Uh, We'll start to show the screen starting to, um, what's the word for it? Uh, start the quality will start to drop. When you light that hits the environment, the screen will turn gray. It's not black. Because it, it can't pull contrast level. So I tell you that contrast is everything, it is a must. That is a great technology right there, the one we're at that's going to be launching. Again, say Gray Cinema 5D right there. That's a Dark Star 9 sitting against my screen. The $3,000 projection screen. Oop, stepping on my measuring tape here. It's not to put anybody down in any way. It's just to show you exactly what you should be seeing. When people are doing these demonstrations or these tests or whatever they're doing, you should be seeing all of this. We're going to go mimic the screen now again. Now I'm going to use the OLED demonstration. Any areas that are not black will come up gray. Any red colors will automatically fade from the door because the screen cannot pull a proper contrast level. See how the balls are faded there? The other screen is completely not even there at all together. That's why we do a lot of the ambient light rejection tests outside. Because we know that there's more light going to be outside on the screen than there is going to be inside the house. So that basically gives me a, a lot of coverage of knowing that if anybody sticks to the screen in any kind of environment they may have, keep in mind environments change. If put it this way, if a person basically sets the mood and their video for their demonstration is to be done in a typecast ambient light controlled environment, that means once that's taken out of that comfort zone and put into a zone where some of us may have like condensed lighting throughout the entire house and you're inside your house may look like a shopping mall. That screen's automatically going to fade when it hits that environment because it's not used to being hit with anything than the comfortable environment that it's used to being set in. 
That's why the screen is reacting different over here than it would be reacting over there. Because in my environment, I have far more ambient light than that maybe that individual may have in their environment. That's why we do the demonstrations outside. Because I know that anything that screen gets hit with, it's going to be to take it in because it's doing number one at a thousand lumens, which is a cakewalk. And then on top of that, the environment outside, basically it is what it is. There's nothing protecting the screen. There's no walls, there's no ceilings, there's no roof. That screen is taking in all that ambient light. That's why we do those demonstrations outside. So if you stick this in your environment, you're not going to have a problem with that screen pulling up because it's used to being tested outside. See? I've seen in martial art competitions where I've seen people, have you ever heard of conditioning the body? What conditioning the body means? It means they strike the body over and over and over again to get it used to taking pain, to take punishment. So if that person takes a hit from somebody, they can absorb the impact. That's what conditioning the body. Football players do it, basketball players do it. Anybody who's in a contact sport, it's going to get hit, smacked, or knocked over. It's used to be going through conditioning. We're going to put that right back up there because they've got to skip on the screen. That's what it's for. But if a person basically kind of doesn't do that part of that particular form of physical sport correctly, they get hit with somebody, they're going to get decapitated. You know what I mean? So I've seen fighters walk into a ring and get hit with a thrust kick to the, to the, um, to the bread basket and just take it in, absorb it, and just take it in like it ain't nothing. Because they're used to being hit over and over and over in, in that particular area without mercy. Then you see somebody like we call candy soldiers that are basically given black belts and blue belts from doing like one year or a couple of months and, you know, get the little achievement, people coming and clapping their hands. We've seen those. They get hit with somebody who's a professional fighter. They crumble like newspaper in the rain. They're not designed for it. They're not conditioned for that kind of punishment. Same thing goes with our technology. It's designed to be put through rigorous punishment. So we're doing ambient light rejection tests outside. And when I go to a facility and the facility is well lit, and they're using it. Of course, they're going to use a projector way over the projector I'm using. I start laughing because I know what the outcome is going to be. My screen's going to pull up in that image with, and facility with no problem. We do thousand lumen projectors over here. You know what I mean? We do our demonstrations. We drop them at 20 feet back on 800 lumens, 20 feet back. And you're going to hit my screen with a 4,000, 5,000, 6,000 lumen projector at 30 feet back. Oh man, I'm just sitting there just, you want to just give me the contract, let me sign it right now. And that's the reason why we do these rigorous testing on this stuff, man. Because I know that every time my screen, my screen paint goes somewhere, it's in a different environment. Somebody's putting it in a different environment. But if you put it in the same dark environment every time, then what's going to happen is if you stick it in a new environment, the screen's going to react different. That's why. When people ask me, say, hey, is this going to work in my living room? Have you seen that demonstration, that thousand moon projector outside? Oh, yes, it is. So one of the things I noticed, like I said, when I see these demonstrations, they'll say, oh, well, he's matching your technology perfectly. No, he's not. You got to stare at the screen correctly. Anytime that screen flashes a black level, that screen will automatically change. And then you don't look at the big picture of it all. If we're matching, if he's matching our technology perfectly, right? That's what you're saying, right? Then that means that our technology is producing a white level high enough to blend into his screen. When all the time it was claimed to be a screen so dark you couldn't see it. There you go. Okay, mind blown. Mind just got blown out of the water. Think about that part. Take that part into consideration. Look at even the commercials. See right there when the hair is black? See how gray it comes up?
Now let's go in. These are the demonstrations that they usually try to pull up because it shows them they can basically pull contrast. Not pulling contrast, you're pulling dark gray. Because if you were to pull up a star field, see anywhere it hits it's black, now there you go, you see it? Anywhere it hits black, it's going to come up gray every single time. Using demonstrations with a lot of city lights involved, stuff like that, bright levels, is how they can basically get around to basically trying to show a screen that produce a black level. I know all the tricks. Now DMP Supernova, they don't do that. Um, they show contrast levels and all that stuff. They don't do that at all, period. That's something they don't do. I watch a lot of the demonstrations. They don't. They just show the screen as it is. They show the demonstration of the different projectors. Only thing that gets me about them is the fact that, come on, man, you, you mean... The projectors they use in their demonstrations are extremely expensive, you know. And of course, at one point you start thinking like, who's doing all the work? So they don't use any low lumen projectors. They came out there with, like I said, with a thousand lumen 720p projector, and they were to produce the same image. It looked amazing. Then I would go, okay, that's freaking amazing, okay. But they use high end projectors. But then you got to question yourself, you know, which one of those is doing all the work? Is it the projector or the screen? Is it the screen or the projector? Which one is it? Let's go over to. Uh all right, I've seen this one done a few times on my technology. Let me see, we're gonna do this one right here. I'll cover just about everything. Told you, when I showed you the red, the bright reds first, that's why I was showing you the bright reds first. So that's light they have in the environment. Both these screens use a form of ambient light rejection environment. They do. This is not an ambient light rejection environment. Well, not say ambient light. Ambient light controlled environment. Sorry about that. Ambient light controlled environment. We're going to do ambient light controls in here. We just light some light. So it's regular light I have in the environment. And my screen at 135 inches sit right, sits right up under the ceiling, as you can see, right next to the light that hits the screen. That's why I'm showing the bright colors because I want to show you where, you know, there's images like I've seen in our other past paints that were supposed to be so dark. But as you're seeing that screen's producing a beautiful image. With no problem. And this is not to put anybody's technology down. It's not to call anybody a scammer. None of that at all. I'm just showing you what you need to see. What you actually should be seeing in a demonstration. Not cutting corners, not doing half the demonstrations in the dark, not avoiding contrast levels and all that stuff. It's the stuff you should be seeing. Let's go over to uh, LG Foods. I'm not going to shy away from any demonstration. I'm not going to hide anything from you. I'm going to see it as it is. That's the way it should be.
I have, I have no problem doing bright images. I really don't. Not on this technology, I don't. Not on any of the technology we develop, I don't have that problem. And we'll do it with the 9, too. Just to show you. That's a UV mix scroll boys, so you can see that right up there against a black screen. They're not going to come into this room. They're not going to come in here. They're not going to come in here. They're not going to talk. They're not going to come in here. It's, it's too much for them to take in. It is. It's too much for them to take in. Because they got to figure out why, how in the world is his screen doing that? And yet all the demonstrations they've seen, the screen was so dirty and so dark that you couldn't see the image at all, hardly. But yet, for some reason, on the UB mix, it's it, the other screen struggling. The DMP Superman was going to struggle either way because this is a lighter screen. But how in the world is the fact that my image is coming up so bright? And this is what basically confuses them. So you got a lot of questions to ask. You do the day you do, and we'll do this pre-recorded just so we get the clarity. And the clarity's not showing up. And DMP supernovas are, um, are um, white levels are amazing, but the problem is because the white level is too high, the contrast starts to fade. Now, see when the logo comes up, that screen is supposed to be black. Interesting here. We're going to do an LG snowboard demonstration. Freaking um, DLP is going to look like a monster in this field because it's going to be to produce a very high white level. But when it comes to contrast, the screen is going to look kind of bad. Crow, if you're watching this, when you probably will later on today, I want you to look at your, your screen paint. I want you to see this person. We're doing this on a white snow scene, on a black screen. So we don't have too many flashing. Let's go over and let's pull up a, a snow screen saver. 4K. Of course, my projector is 720p, so 4K would mean chat. But anyway, we're going to pull up an all white screen saver for snow. Now my screen should be much, much, much darker because it's black. Yeah, the white levels are very good. So good that it's very close to your screen, which is much lighter than my screen. But let me show you something. This right here is white sheet of paper. This is going to look, make all the other screens look really bad because this is pure white. This is going to produce a pure white image with no flaw whatsoever. This is the stuff you avoid. These are tests you won't do. This is not to put anything against you. Now keep in mind, when it comes to these gray screens, hey, they're in the same boat too, and I'll tell you why. Because they do all their technology against other white screens. And like, like really seriously, it's going to be a challenge for you. Like, okay, big companies like Elite Screens, all of them, you've seen Black Diamond demonstrations. They take that piece of paper and they move it in front of the projector. They do all white screens. Anything can be the white screen, literally. Like, I don't even have to paint a white screen. I can just trip and just throw paint all over the side of the screen with some great primer. It's going to be the white screen. But when it comes to white levels, nothing is going to be the white screen because the white screen is the only screen that has the ability to be able to pull a white level as a black screen is the only screen that has the ability to be able to pull. So let's see the comparison against your screen, against a white screen. 
That's why you can't go around acting like, oh, well, black screens uh, produce such a dark, dark, dark level, and you can't see the screen that well. When your screen paint can't even match, you can't even go against a white screen. I told you, nothing will ever go against a white screen. That's virtually impossible. My screen couldn't take it. I think the only thing close enough I've seen come to a white screen is an Seymour AB 1.3. That has a really good silver screen. I mean, a really good silver screen. Definitely a good screen. Gave me a run for my money a few times when I was actually testing against it. So it's a really good screen. But when you're sitting there saying that, okay, you're matching your technology against ours and you're showing white levels, of course, your screen's going to produce a higher white level, especially if you're using something, one of those lighter screen paints, it's going to produce a higher white level because our screen is black, all right? But if you show contrast, which you do not do, because you know what will happen, our screen will show a higher contrast level and a better image than your screen, but you can't do that. You can't show that at all, period. So you avoid those demonstrations. You do the demonstrations with the bright colors and stuff. Now, I saw the demonstration that you did I went with our paint side by side, and our screen pulled colors and matched your screen with no problem whatsoever. But you tried to basically make the screen seem darker when it came to lighter colors, when basically none of your screens would ever match a white screen. If you want to talk about white levels, white levels, that's what you're pretty much uh, 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 betting on. It's white levels. None of your screens will ever match a white screen. It won't happen. And none of your screens will ever be able to do a contrast level. That's, that's the way it is. It is what it is. You know? Even my screen, like I said, when it comes to white levels, will never ever be the match of white screen. And I've said it before, our white levels might not be as bright as a gray screen, but our white levels are high enough where you won't see the image come out so dark you can't see it. I've said that many times. But that part you miss altogether when we talk. When, we, we have these, uh, when you talk about my technology, this is the part you miss when I say these things on camera all the time. And even says it in the description. White levels may be a tad lower, but... It says that it will not disrupt the picture quality. But you miss all that. You're so bent on so much anger. That's what it is. But I'm showing your UP mix next to a white screen. And so you can see exactly his screen. If I were doing an all-white screen demonstration, say my screens were all white and I was doing a demonstration, I could go and say, look how dark his image is next to our technology. Same thing you did to us. But... The thing about my technology is my screen is jet black and I can mimic your screen just like that. Watch. Now I can go ahead and pull up a black star field demonstration. Let's pull up the Sony contrast demonstration right now. Now this is the Sony contrast demonstration. Do you see your screen's not pulling any black level with no other? The DMP supernova, not pulling up a black level. The white sheet of paper, not pulling up a black level. All right. We go back in again, and we're going to pull up a solid red. Your screen can't pull a solid red next to a black screen. Now the red screen, the white screen, is not going to pull up any form of red whatsoever. Period, because it is a white screen. That's all to it. That's also, too, a lesson to those of you who have white projection screens. You're still using white projection screens. Some of you have 4K projectors. Some of you have 1080p projectors. And you're still using white projection screens. That's what you're getting. That's why you have to go through the whole crazy, and then put on my new sh another shirt. You have to go through the whole nonsense of calibrating your projector and all that other nonsense that goes along with it because your screen can't pick up proper color. It doesn't make a difference if you go out and you buy 4K, if you buy 16K, 18K, 4,000 lumens, 5,000 lumens. It does not make a difference. You cannot see color. That's it. That's the bottom line. You got to change your screen. It's not your projector, it's your screen. These are Christie's over here, and they have amazing color capability. You're not going to be able to see it with a white screen. Not going to happen. That's what happens. This is 4,000 lumens. Even with a lumen count, still not going to pull it up. If you think hitting a white screen with a higher lumen count on a projector is going to basically produce a better color and image, you're sadly wrong. I hate to say it that way on that note, but it is. You're whitewashing your screen. It's like the equivalence of walking out in the middle of a snowstorm on a sunny day without sunglasses. That's pretty much what you're doing. That's what your projector is seeing when it sees all that white. It's blinds out. Gone. But you need a darker shade in order to be able to block out the white light 
and bring in a darker image. All right, let's bring up some blue. Told you. Gray screens do the same thing too. They can't pull color. Now our technology over here, now you're probably saying, well, you put you got a gray screen right there, Ken. We did that, rewind the video. My gray screens pull color. They also pull contrast. They also have a different code that makes them look different from any other screen. But let's keep it going because you guys can rewind the video and go back to that. All right, so let's go pull up green. I love pulling these up because, like I said, this also helps people have white screens too. Ugh, I'm not showing that commercial. We can go right over here and look at that. So that's the contrast level on our gray technology. That's actually lighter than the UV mix. That's the black level that black silver can pull up. Gray screen, white screens don't pick up nothing at all, period. At all, period. All right, people, let's, uh, let's pull up a Starfield demonstration, which is a demonstration I try to get people to do, but they will not do the Starfield demonstration. Starfield demonstration. We definitely got to do that one tonight. This might have some commercials behind it, because usually it does. A bunch of commercials will pop up behind it. Nope, there we go. So that's the Starfield demonstration. Fully lit environments. We done we do Starfield demonstrations outside. DMP Supernova. Oh, let's see. I've got a shirt on now so I can jump in front of the camera. We got a DMP Supernova. We have a Grace Cinema 5D. Right here, we'll put that right there. Find the bar. All right. They won't pull contrast. Let's go grab a Dark Star Nine. If I can find what's it? What sticky tape downstairs? A small. Do you want tape? Small. No, Softest on tape. Let's see if I can figure out what my tape. I just bought some downstairs. Literally, literally. Oh, there it is, right over there. Cool. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm saying. We're just not going after one person. Because I don't want, you know, certain people to get on the offense of. But also, too, like I said, these demonstrations have to be done right. So that's why you're seeing me hit the screens with straight blues and greens and reds, white levels, everything. Because this is what you're supposed to be seeing. If you're going to be testing my product and doing demonstrations, then you need to subject your screen to the same scrutiny our screens get put under. All right, this is, oh, that didn't sit there too long. White screen's not going to like, no! Right, introduce me to this nonsense. But yeah, as you can see, the white, no. And like I said, it doesn't make a difference. You can get, I'm going to go out and get a 2.0 white screen, 1.0 white screen. I'm going to get several different forms of sample sheets of white screens. I'm going to put them all together. For those of you that are still using white screens, to show you that, no, they all react the same way. Then we'll get some white paper, a construction paper, we'll get some white bed sheets. You'll see it all looks the same. You know, you're like, gee whiz, like, what the freak did I just pay for? And then we'll take our technology and we'll just splatter it all down the side of it and show you. As a matter of fact, I'm not even going to paint it. I'm just going to take a bucket of our paint and just throw it against the screen and shoot the video. That's what we're going to do. We're going to do it outside. Of course, I don't have to put cloth everywhere because, yeah, I don't want to get my sidewalk jacked up. All right. We're showing the contrast of I'm trying to get this, what you call them. Also, too, uh, the arcade cabinet, probably going to be done a little later because I had to order some more stuff. Apparently, me, spray paint, and my rest, my, uh, my uh, mask, which was keeping me from breathing that stuff in, does not go well. So, eventually, I'm going to have, I had to use some hobby paint. I'm getting glow in the dark hobby paint to finish that also. I bought some bio stickers and all that stuff. All that stuff is coming in. All right. So, we got the... Paxil, right there, as you can see up close what we got. This is a pretty dark screen, as you can see. I thought these screens, when I first saw them, were black. I really thought they were black. Because when I was looking at the video, I was like, oh, shoot, they got a black screen. I gotta, I gotta, get, I gotta get that sample, because that's a black screen, it's a black screen, which is pretty cool, because I gotta find out. 
But I got it here and found out that it's not really black. It's kind of a gunmetal gray. But it's reflective, so it's a reflective surface. So it does react a little different. All right. There you go. You would think it'd be a lot darker if I put it against my screen, wouldn't you? But it's not. So right there, nothing falls off, which I'm hearing things cracking and peeling. This right here is by Seymour AV. This is their black screen. They're called matinee silver. So if you see anything with an MB next to it, that's no, sorry, matinee black. This is a matinee black. I'm gonna have to go upstairs and get some more Velcro because I could have swore I bought that enough, but apparently I didn't. So I'll have to grab some more. down just showing you that this is what you're supposed to see this is the demonstration you're supposed to see I see um, the whatchamacallit fell off so we got some more tape for that not worried about that we'll get that back up there doesn't want to stay Whew. I can't look at these stars man these stars make me freaking dizzy I don't know what you have no idea dizzy. that makes me right now I was wondering while I was standing, while the floor was starting to spin a little bit, like I always shoot stars that make me dizzy. We're going to take a uh, Dark Star 9. Dark Star 9 right here, see how dark the screen is. As I said before, I made a statement that nothing will beat a black screen when it comes to contrast. So we'll grab the Dark Star 9. There's your two. All right, there's Dark Star 9. And Dark Star 9 is going to pull better contrast. I'm going to lay it flat because it's buckled a little bit. Keep in mind, when you're doing uh, screens that have a reflective surface, it is best to basically lay them down flat. They have to lay flat. If they don't lay flat, they're not going to be able to produce a better image. i make sure the screen has... Mind you, this is Velcro that I'm sticking to my screen. Sticky stuff Velcro I have to peel off my screen, which shows you how the stuff bleeds into the surface. I don't have to worry about my, my screen peeling or cracking or any of that nonsense. All right, so you see the Dark Star 9 is pulling up a much, much better darker image than the rest of these because that's why it's, a, it's called Dark Star 9. It's a darker screen. It actually has a 0 0.9 gain. It does. Yes, it does. Now, um, let me see. So we know the black screen's going to pull contrast. We know this from the door, okay? The next screen's going to be over the candle for that. Well, let's go back again. Bring up those colors. Always oh, good to bring those color patterns up. Let's bring up the color gray too, also. So you can see. Now, for those you need to know, what's in the middle right there? We have UV Mix right here. We have a Gray Cinema 5D. We have a DMP Supernova, a Dark Star 9, and we have a Paxil, I think, by Daylight Green. They're like it. What is our name? One more time. Show those blue levels off. All right, show the green levels off. Let me get the commercial right there. Now, for those of you crow boys out there, I want you to understand this. You're going to look at the video. I know they're going to look at the video like, oh my goodness, his paint's blending into his paint. No, it's a black screen blending into a screen that's lighter than that. That screen can't pull contrast. It's okay, but it can't pull contrast. So let's go to, uh, let me see. We're gonna go to a jet, we're not gonna do a jet by screen table, that'd be too easy. Um, let's do the Apple. Apple has a pretty cool logo demonstration.
So keep in mind, our black technology is pouring a white level so high that it's blending into a UV mix with no problem. The only problem with the UV mix is when it shows shades of red and different shades of black, it will come up gray and the colors will come up faded. So how the technology is mimicking the screen. It's mimicking his screens. Keep in mind, like I said, in those advertisements, my screen is supposed to be dark, you boys. I mean, I'm sorry, you boys. I'm sorry, you boys. My screen is supposed to be so dark that you're not supposed to be able to see it. So how is it sitting right next to that screen and it's producing a nice bright image right next to it? That gives you something to think about for a little bit. Like, what in the world? That's not supposed to happen. That's absolutely preposterous. Preposterous, I tell you. Let's pull up um, black uh, black test. You see, black level test. Black level test. We were going to pull up the city skyline. We can bring our calibration back down. Let me just recalibrate no lead screens. As you can see in the background, it's gray. That's black. That's black, gray. You can see right there from there. Now let me show you a magic trick. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. You'll see in a few minutes. See how we can mimic? We can mimic his screen perfectly. Black screen is mimicking his great technology. Look at the packs so right there. Mimic. 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 Is that crazy or what? But my screen is darker. You want to see this with the lights out? It's even crazier with the lights out. Watch this. Boom! They're all gone. So here you are. You have Supreme 12. That's darker than every last one of these screens sitting against my screen. And we're able to pull a bright level, a white level, high enough to blend into these screens where they just disappear. Now, as I said before, and I warned you crystal clear, that great technology we developed over there, I wouldn't dare do a side-by-side -side next to that technology. You do not want to go near that road. That screen's going to mimic your tech. Black screen can do it. Come on, that can definitely do it. That's, easy. That's great technology. We call that a mid-class screen. That's why the price on it's so low, because we call it a mid-class screen. These screens, these black screens, the darker screens we develop, the clips, all of them, all of them, they're darker screens, because actually they're higher class of screen. So they can pull contrast levels and can pull white levels at the same time. Where the mid-level screens, which is this gray technology we have over here, uh, basically this is a roll-on. Roll-ons um, are a little different from the spray-on. We had to alter the chemical in order to make it so if you're rolling application. The spray on is actually a pure form of the, of, of the formula. So it reacts differently. So keep in mind the roll on version, as I said before, is a very good version. Like I said, the only problem you can't do with it is you just can't do it for rear projection. That's all. Other than that, it's absolutely freaking amazing. As you can see right there, boom, that is the, um, the roll on screen. That's actually um, darker, actually, actually lighter than um, the UV, UV mix. And like I said, if I do them side by side, when I did the 1,000 lumen projector versus 4,000 lumen projector, you could see where that screen was producing that 1,000 lumen projector so bright that it was matching a 4,000 lumen projector easily. Now, see, that's why I tell you, you've got to think. I'm going to repeat this again. When somebody sits there and says that, oh, you know, we have the same form of technology because my screen's matching his, you just basically consider to call yourself a hypocrite because your main 
uh, demonstrations were that our black screens were so dark that you couldn't see them. Real dark, muddy images, right? So how is it possible that that technology is blending into yours, or as you say, you're, you're, um, you're able to match the technology? And if that's the case, then that means our screens can produce a high white level, something that you denied and lied about. But what you didn't show in the demonstration is you didn't show contrast level. That's what you failed to show. And the reason why you stayed away from the contrast levels because your screen clearly would not be able to produce a contrast level because it is not black, as I'm showing you here. It can't produce contrast. That's why I never showed your contrast level. There you go. That's why. I'm showing you the, the, how it's supposed to be done. If we go get a... We're going to get another demonstration right here. Look at the commercials. Look at the commercials pop up. They blend right into your screen. No problem. They blend into a lot of the screens with no problem. Go back here, a little too far up. One of these is bright flowers. Now the background of this demonstration is jet black. The screen is supposed to produce a jet black background and nice beautiful colors that pop through. These are basically used for calibrating OLED um, screens. See how the red came up? When I showed you the straight colors of red, that's why I show you solid colors. When they blend all those colors in together, you can't see what's what. So that's why you have to see the solid colors first. You have to be sure you tell it reds, blue, greens. You have to see how the screen is going to react with that color and that color only. Take all the other colors out of the equation and just put one solid color up there so you can see exactly what you are really seeing not camouflage in a bunch of colors. So that way, when I show you the videos and you see the color come up faded, you saw exactly what you saw. I need to get me a lab coat for myself because I can. Let's see the bright levels. Anything that hits those screens are automatically going to turn. They're, they're not, the colors are going to be faded. Anyway, they're not just his. Any one of them are going to do the same thing. You see the color in the flower here? Next to our technology. That's black technology. This is technology you were supposed to say you went against. I think what it was was he wasn't betting that we had his product. I think that's what it was. We don't tell y'all everything. Somebody came in the room and asked me that question. You know, do you have this product? We said no. That's not for you to know. There's certain things I just don't tell y'all. There's certain things, there's certain projects we have set up that y'all don't know about. There's certain things we don't tell you. Most of always tell never let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Just things you just don't know about. We don't tell you about. Of course, when he came and he asked me that. Because, of course, he probably went back thinking we didn't have his product. We had all your screen paints. What do you think? I collect all forms of screens. You see the research I have to do? All these different forms of sample sheets. You know how many companies I had to call and email and pay for to get all these sample sheets? I do my research. So if I do my research on them, what makes you think I wouldn't do my research on you? which means I have all your products. Just because I couldn't basically, you couldn't see my name pop up, I got contacts in California, I got contacts in Florida that buy for me all the time. That's why if you notice, and I hate to put it this way, that's why you go through the rigorous email nonsense. You have to be screened before you can buy stuff because he knows we're buying his stuff up. It shouldn't be that hard. It's not hard to get my stuff. It really shouldn't be that hard for us to get your stuff. We have to go through, we have to pay other people or some people don't even bother, you don't mind. But some people, to inconvenience them, we pay them a little money to go get it for us. 
We got to literally go through that in order to get your product. If I wanted a leaf screen sample sheet, I'd call a leaf screen and say, hey, look, I want this sample sheet, so and so and so. Click it, click it, done. It's mail to mouse. Not you. You're hard to get stuff from. If you place an order through my website right now, your order will get processed, be out the door, but no problem at all. You wouldn't be waiting to be none of this nonsense. You get your order done. You, but you got to go to somebody else and get it. You don't have to do that. You can buy it directly from us. It don't bother me at all. But if I want to get something from you, I got to go through some nightmare stuff. Because I already went through that stuff where we did the eBay thing that went through that was all recorded live, where I tried to order your product online live. And you canceled my order three times in a row. And not only that, you hiked the paint up. Would you like me to get the videos and post them at the bottom? Because I can do so. If you want to see that, Crow Boys. And then removed his eBay, his eBay account. Removed the whole entire account so we couldn't get to the paint anymore. So, like I said, you can go buy my product. I don't, when people call me up, I don't put them through no rigorous questionnaires, none of that stuff. You buy, that's it. Because I can do live demonstrations and I can back up my technology. That's why. I just don't like it when people do my demonstrations and they try to basically make our screens fail by missing, mixing in black paint into our products. And that's why we started color coding all our technology because individuals were doing that, trying to do false unboxing demonstrations. So now you have to explain today to all your followers and whatever, how is it possible that I have your UB mix up here on my black screen and I'm blending your screen right now? That's something you're gonna to have to explain. All those videos you've done, and I'll post one of those videos. You wanna watch one of those videos? I'll post one. You explain to me how that's possible, you know? But I won't have this problem with any of these other big companies. I only have one problem with one company, and we all know who they are. They just didn't like us at all, period. But whatever, that's a whole other story in its own. But anyway, that's, that's no, like I said, no story on. But this right here, this is right there showing you. No way around this. And if you were to basically start claiming that we're using smokes and mirrors, if that's what I'm using, some kind of magical trick, well, you can no longer call me Mr. Bird. You should address me as Thanos. Because I have the power to manipulate reality and time. Gee whiz, if I had that kind of power, what would I do with it? Now, think about it. Wouldn't do anything evil with it, because I got to answer for everything I do, so I wouldn't do that. Or there's something I would do. It would benefit everybody to tell you the truth. You know what I'm talking about, right? This whole we can't go out and do anything. I would definitely make sure that never happened. I swear, if I have to wash my grapes off with a Clorox wipe one more time, I'm gonna freaking lose it. You know, it's sad when you got your little ones come down to see you. My god kids that come down and see me, I can't even hug them. That's jacked up, ain't it? That is really jacked up. Sorry to put that out there in the middle of the video, but yeah, that bothers the daylight sound. I haven't seen my mother in so long. I can't even hug her if I see her. My mother's 80 something years old. I take that risk. I'll get her sick or something like that. You know what I mean? Even though I take care of myself, but still. I can't remember the last time I saw the inside of a, yeah, even McDonald's. I haven't been inside of McDonald's. I haven't left my house since March 11th. Whew, man, gonna have to get out and do something. But okay, but I got plenty to do in here. This is why I have so many projects to keep myself occupied. Let's get through this. So, uh, let's do, uh, let me see, we did that already right there. We did the, which one right there? Uh, let me see. Let's do some food demonstration. I'm going to pick up some nice bright colors. Let's go with, uh, I like the relaxing butterfly demonstrations. Relaxing butterflies. Butterfly. Relaxing butterflies. I like those. Those particular demonstrations are like, because there's a lot of bright colors in the relaxing butterflies. Let me see if I hit that right. There we go. There's a kind of before the storm. I know. Been that way for and that's why I have all the other sample sheets up there because I don't want this individual to feel like he's being singled out. So I have other demonstrations we're also testing too because these are the demonstrations I have to do. 
have to test my demonstrations against certified projection screens. All this has to be done. Now people sit there and say, I have somebody sit there and say, why would you let this bother you? It doesn't bother me. It's just that I don't like when people cut corners. If you're going to do a demonstration, do it right or don't do it at all. That's where I was raised. Do something correctly or you don't do it at all. You don't waste somebody else's time. So I believe if, you know, if you're going to do a demonstration, do it correctly. So if you can't do it, I'll come on here and do it for you. That's the way it should be. And some people say, well, you know, you shouldn't let it get to you. It doesn't get to me. But let's put it this way, in a way you can understand. It took me 10 years to build my company. A lot of hard work. A lot of late nights, you know what I mean? There's nothing harder than running your own company because you can't afford to slack off because if you do, you suffer for it in the long run. So it's a lot of hard work. Anybody who owns a company knows what I'm talking about. Now, consider this that, you know, you put all this time into it, you build this company up, and it's now it's starting to make money, it's doing this, it's doing what it's supposed to do, and you're seeing the profit of your hard labor. That's like the equivalent of you working hard every single day to get a car that you always wanted. And you get your car, you park it in your driveway, but your neighbor sees it, doesn't like it, and decides to take a car key to the side of your car. Now, how would you handle that situation? Will you confront the neighbor, or would you say, you know what, I'm just going to walk away from it, it's not worth my time, blah, 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 just that, and so and so and so. No, some of you would probably do far worse than I'm probably thinking right now. You know how you're going to react. I've seen people snap in a supermarket from watching a shopping cart ding the side of their car. So I know how someone's going to react. You worked all this time to earn this particular vehicle that you want, and you finally get that vehicle parked in your driveway. Can't wait a gate wait to get the next work the next day so you can show off your car to your friends and all that stuff at like your job and everything. We all been there. You know what I'm talking about. Get that car pride. Got something you really worked hard, something you've been talking about for a long time. You finally got it, got it in your driveway, and you get the next day and you got a huge scratch right down the side of your car. How would you handle that? You're driving nice cars right now. Walk outside and see someone, your neighbor keyed your car. <laughs> see how you react. I guarantee you, at least, not, I say 98% of y'all would have flashing lights in front of y'all house. I guarantee you. That's how I look at it. So, if someone's going to sit there and say my company is not what it is, it's my job to go up there and show you that it is. I remember Genesis and NES was going at it. Oh, they were going at it. Which one had the best processor? Which one produced the best colors? Which one had the best loading time? Coke versus Pepsi. I mean, it goes on and on and on, you know what I mean? But I don't think they were coming out and saying vicious, malicious stuff like Coke was saying that, well, you know, if you drink Coke, there's a good chance that you could have birth defects. That's a lawsuit right there. That's a serious lawsuit if you can't prove it. So, you know, you can't do this. It's called slander. You can't do stuff like that. Now, I know from making enough product in my lifetime, I know how that stuff is made. I know how UB is made. I know how it's made. I can tell how it's, I know how it's made, how it's reacting. But, and it's something very simple too. I'm going to keep my mouth shut. It's nobody's business on how it's done. Um, that's between him and God. The other screens right here, I mean, they all use the same code. Usually most of the screens I look at, they always use the same code, that reflective kind of material. Which I don't know why, because these screens suffer from narrow viewing combs. Not all of them, but some of them already do. More darker ones, more darker ones that have that kind of reflective coating has the ability to suffer from narrow viewing combs. But you see our black technology blended into that screen? That's the part I want you to take away from that. That you're looking at a black screen blend perfectly into a screen paint that was... Just advertising. Whoop, that was gone. All right, bye bye. Oh, you're not going to stay? Why not? We're having crimpings today. Stay up there. Be nice. Will you? Nope. So it's, a try it's a lot of hard work trying to get a, um, a black screen to be able to produce 
just as bright as a gray screen. It is really hard to do. It's not an easy thing to do. It takes a lot of time and a lot of research. Some of that research even sent me to the hospital. Stress. We only had a lot of stress when I first started off. A lot of work. A lot of stress. Just trying to get the image I saw in my head onto the screen. That's what was driving me crazy. Especially first time I walked into Walmart and I saw an OLED TV. Oh man, I was like, what the freak? That screen was super black. I was like, oh, yep. Yeah. It's when we had, uh, we were using dark gray technology at that time. I was like, no, oh, something we got to change now. Something definitely got to change. We got to get a black screen. Like I said, they can produce the bright colors when it comes to certain contrast levels. The screens will start to struggle, or maybe they're producing too much white light and the screen starts to wash out. The balance isn't there. Now, let me show you what you should be seeing. When you look at this screen, what do you see that's wrong here? When it comes to these screens, what's wrong? The contrast is missing from the screen. I'm looking at it right now. I guarantee you don't see it. We'll get a little closer. See it now? I don't have powers, just want to let you know. That just happened by fluke. Like, what the freak? Did he just... No, I don't got no Jedi powers and none of that stuff, no. Come on, you think if I had powers, I'd be right here right now? Seriously. Oh, man. No way in the world. All right, we'll do this again. All right, so you see it now? That's black. That's gray. These screens are not going to pick it up at all, period. Now, you see why this screen is picking up better? That's a Dark Star 9. That's why it's a real dark screen. Dark Star 9s have amazing contrast capabilities. That's why it's a $3,000 projection screen. That right there is a Gray Cinema. Is that a Gray Cinema 5D? Yeah, Gray Cinema 5D, right there. That's some DMP supernova right there. So I should just show you what you're really getting. They'll do a demonstration like this in the dark. Because they got a better chance of producing that image. That's why they can't do demonstrations with the lights on. If you notice, I've only had the lights off a few times. That's it. And you're going to be watching this in your home. Why I'm going to be showing you a demonstration in the dark. No point. So you get a better shot of this. I want you to get a real close shot of it all. I don't want you to be too far back. Just there's not one to stay, I'll tell you that much right there. I was about to pause my freaking video, like wait a minute, wrong camera. Oh, come on, man. You gotta stay up there. Okay, I know you don't want to be there, but you gotta stay up there. Just stay. Stay. Urgh. Stay, man. Come on.
time to get there all day long doing this mess. The things to do today, I'm supposed to be building my arcade cabinet today, finishing that off today, because I got parts coming in today to finish it off. All right, there we go. Everybody's up there. Now, I've said before, when you're watching the OLED demonstrations, the backgrounds in OLED demonstrations are jet black. If that screen comes up gray, then it's having a problem with the contrast. A screen is blending into a UV mix, like there's no problem. There you go. But let me show you something here. So this is the gray mix. That's what I'm telling you. Don't I warn you. That's a black screen right there for doing that. What do you think a gray screen is going to be brutal, my friend? It's going to be brutal. Where are the curve boys at? I think these guys are being in right now. Seven o'clock. Usually I get curve boys from all over the place. Let me see. Let's go grab uh, I'm gonna take this out. And we're going to go into, uh, I think, Backyard is the other one. So there's a UP mix laying against my screen. See, that screen doesn't even rip or tear. And we'll put them against our gray technology. We can mimic any technology, even this stuff. So where's the screen at? And these are two different colors and screens, two different colors. You see a screen? Okay. Let's leave that there. Let's go get. A dark stone eye. Yeah. Money black screens do this. The gray screen should definitely be to do this, but no problem. So here we go. Dark stone eye. Let's uh, grab, um, let's see. Mm. DMP Supernova. Now the only thing these screens are going to show are the contrasts over it. They can't pull contrast. Now let me show you something pretty cool. All right, so we we'll take these off right now, right? And we're just going to use UV mix on. We'll take these off, All right? Because we're going to do this demonstration ahead of time, so you know who does not just scream it's going off. It doesn't get any any bright ideas. All right, so UV mix is gone. You don't see it, right? So you think they're probably the same color screen, but I'm standing in front of it. Remember, I told you the technology we developed in these screens have the ability to produce they can mimic black levels, right? Stand in front again. Right, you think both screens are the same, right? I love doing this demonstration. I'll do this demonstration all day. It's fun. It is fun, people. It's fun. All right, yeah, big spider in the corner of my screen. I don't like spiders. All right. All right, here we go. Got to block my projector right there. There we go. Hold on. Let me turn the projector off here. There we go. They're not the same color. Two different colors, as you can see. But my screen, when it's being hit with a, uh, with a projector, can automatically darken. So my screen is actually lighter than his screen. 
But yet when my screen's getting hit with any form of contrast, the screen automatically darkens by itself. But when I stand in front of them, both screens look the same, right? Okay. Should we go to the table? Should we go to the table? We should go to the table. Are you going to do that again? Yes, I am. Now, as you can see, you looked in the video, one screen was mimicking. Oh, I'm leaving this on my countertop, too. I'm going to clean that off. Hey, Kurt, you hope that comes off my countertop. That's a granite top, man. We we'll use this. I'll buy some new sponges. I always more sponges on eBay. Not eBay. Um, uh, blah, 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 blah. I can't think of the name of the company. Amazon. All right. Here we go. Clean that mess up. Anyway, so as you can see, gray, right? But if you look at both screens, when I had the projector hitting it, they both look the same color. But when I take it and put it against a black screen and show the screen what it really looks like, our screen is actually a gray, a mid gray, not a dark gray. But you're thinking they're both gray, right? This is the technology on the screen. Now, if you don't believe me, I did a paint on demonstration. So you can see the color in the product. This is what the paint really looks like. But when it dries, it looks gray, mid gray. When this dries, it's a dark gray. So how is it possible that this color turns into that color, but when being hit with a projector turns into that color? Like I told you, I wouldn't put your stuff up against this stuff. So each other, so you can see, two different, not even the same, but yet I can mimic his screen. Isn't that interesting? They're not even gray. Now, if this was a dark gray, and that was a dark gray, it would be easy for you to understand. Okay, that's a dark gray. Oh, I just fell off. That's a dark gray. They're both the same gray. No, they're not the same color. It's a totally different color right here, but yet it produces a gray. Yet, it produces an image that can blend in. So we're doing these demonstrations ahead of time. So we launched this, and he does a side-by-side, -side, which I hope you do, man. I hope you do a side-by-side. -side. And I hope you pour that formula out first, because we want to see the color of it. Matter of fact, you give me your address, and I'll ship you over some for free. You know what? I forgot. I have your address already. So this is what we're going to do. We are going... All right, we're back. It's raining outside. You see Wi-Fi is so buggy out here. And we had to put it on that, which I don't mind. We're using data anyway. All right, so what we're going to do here, because we're doing this now. That's why I showed you on the black screen, how those black screens are designed to mimic... Uh, and so our screens are so dark when we have your own technology blending into our screens with no problem You know we can blend your screens this right here is that weird screen screen paint I showed you the one that has that funny kind of purplish kind of look to it um, But when you paint this onto a surface they come out mid gray now if I walk up from the projector they come out black But that screens actually mid gray now if you look at this you would think they're the same color when they're not so we're going to take his you be and stick it right here in the middle of my screen. We're going to mimic his screen. There you go. So we just, just that screen just mimicked his technology that fast. Don't even see it, do you? But like I said, they're not the same color screen. His screen's actually darker than mine on the black silver. Now, like I said, if I walk in front of it, like so. The screen looks black, right? But if I take the screen and I put you guys here, this is a jet black screen, and I put you against our screen here. Oh, my wall's here. And I set it up here, and you get a look at it. You can see that our screen is lighter, not the same color. But if you look at the coating itself, it doesn't even look like that. It looks like a kind of purplish color to it.
It's not the same screen. In either way. You can mimic other screens too. So that means screens like the MP Supernova screens, all that stuff like that. That check out the colors. So if we're in the kitchen and I got cut off because I should have been over here. We'll be here and do some work right here. Working on something. This is the no So we'll come over here. So we'll be a little closer next to the Wi-Fi signal because way over here cuts off. So if we take a look at his product there and our product here. You can see that his product is actually gray. That's his product. If you look at our technology, our technology doesn't look like that. Now, for those of you who are saying, oh, that's not the same paint on that screen, I did a paint on demonstration using this exact same paint right here in the container. I'll put that at the bottom of the link. It was done live. Oops, get that a little better there. You back, keep in mind, you, you know, well, I don't know why people question me. They know I back up everything. This technology, ugh, get this up on my hands, what the freak. This technology has the ability to be able to mimic black levels, white levels, and it has the ability to reduce on low entry level projectors. So no, they're two different formulas, but we can, but this technology can copy and mimic his screen and do things that his screen paint can't do. Interesting, isn't it? It's really wild when you think about it. I asked somebody, say, how the freak are you guys doing that? How the heck you got a screen that has two different screens, two different colors, and then the formula itself doesn't even look like the screen, but yet it can do, it can match and it can blend. So you can take it right here, you can blend right in there. Bam. No problem. You want to see up close? We'll get you nice and close so you can see the screen. Where is it? All you can see is the tracing. That's it. Let's go over to now we're gonna start color red. You see the difference brighter, deeper red, where this screen right here, the UB, basically brings out a more of a um, kind of a washed out color. Somebody made a comment about something. Let me catch on. Dude, you're not getting. The, you're not getting the. Um, you're not getting the demonstration. If a black screen is supposed to be so dark that it can't produce a white level, how is it possible that my black screen is blending into his screen with no problem? Keep in mind, but when I put on a contrast demonstration, he's not pulling contrast. Just like in this demonstration, I can blend his screen, but he's not pulling up a proper red level. So explain that. I'm giving you a minute to explain. See what I mean? They only see what they want to see. I showed you a black screen Blending into his screen. Then I pulled a contrast level. His screen didn't pull a black level. None of the screens pulled a black level. Only our screen pulled the black level. I showed a demonstration on you rewind the video back too. Because you might well, before you start speaking, I think you should rewind and start looking at the video, then catch up. When I did a demonstration showing off the snowstorm on the uh, what was it? Uh the LG snowstorm, our screen blended with the screen too with white levels. And my screen's black. So now you're seeing our gray technology, which you completely missed the whole point. I showed two different forms of technology. It's mimicking his technology. It's matching it. And now I show you the solid color red, and you can see where my image is coming up nice and bright, where this image is coming up faded. <sighs> Trying to explain things. Man, it's just so freaking unbelievable sometimes. It's not toward my customers. My customers are amazing. They understand our technology. It's the crow boys that don't understand. That's the problem. He just came in and started to hold some of the demonstration on the black screen. The only thing you can say is, so you're saying they're matching together? So if that's the case, if they're matching together, then that screen should put up the same contrast level as my black screen, right? So how come it's not? 
Oh, because they're not the same. So they're not playing matching together. But the black screen, which is a darker screen, which should pull up a darker image and a more of a muddy image, is pulling up an image bright enough to match his screen. How is that possible? That's because black, black technology can pull white light. Oh, and by the way, Crow Boys, your time is up. I gave you five day grace period to do exact same code. Okay, so let me explain something. We have a, script, uh, a video demonstration called the 1100 Lumen Challenge. It was a challenge that was put out last year against any company, not just a particular individual, any company to do the exact same demonstration and post a link at the bottom. Eventually, we got a few crow boys that came in and heard the whole conversation, and they said, look, we got the mix at home. We're going to do the same demonstration. We'll put our links up there. I said, you have three days to post that link. I gave you five days. Went up there and checked the day, which we're going to share. Not one link was posted. Not one. The 1100 lumen challenge was a projector of 1100 lumens sitting 12 feet back from a screen on a black screen, which was an eight at the time. It was producing an image at around six o'clock in the evening with the screen laying flat against the wall. And I was even to show you to show a 190 degree viewing angle outside with that much light. Keep in mind that screen was nowhere in the world being hit with 1100 lumens with that much light. Probably way less than that. And that image still pulled up a jet black image. We used the OLED um, jazz demonstration, very dark demonstration. And I went down to check the day and there's no links there on the R's. So, you know, it is what it is. Missed a hole. He missed a hole. Went over completely over his head. Over his head. Didn't consider the fact that both chemicals are completely different. That his screen is darker than mine, yet my screen is still mimicking his screen with no problem. Girl boys, come on now. I give you guys a lot more credit than that. I think he's quitting. out. Curveball, are you still in the room? Are you still in the room with me? You still in the room? I hope you're there. Are you there? Come on. You didn't leave out already, did you? Come on. Stick around. Stick around. I want you to stay in the room for a little bit. See how that black technology is blending to his screen? But every time we hit an area with contrast, your screen won't show. So they're both the same, and you're saying they're both blending and to be the same screen, right? Okay, so are they blended in now? Where's the contrast on the other screen? 
I'm giving you I'm giving you a chance to speak, my friend. You said that they're both the same technology. That's what you're saying. And you're saying they're matching perfectly. So where's where's the uh, the contrast that was not pulling? We're picking up the bright colors, but no problem. Contrast level still not pulling. So that's the thing. When I ask them to explain the video, I get nothing back. I get nothing back at all. Like I said, they pick and choose their battles. So on bright colors, our black screens can blend in with no problem. On contrast, they can produce contrast levels where other screens can't produce contrast levels. And when people, when, when the crow boy came and they made the statement about saying, well, you know, they are... They are all, they, um, yeah, so the UB mix is disappearing with your mix. So he's saying they're both the same. So how come it's not disappearing here when we're showing contrast? But what you just said was it's disappearing with my mix, which means that the statement that this particular individual made by saying that my product was so dark that you couldn't see it, and if my product is disappearing with his mix, that means my screen can pull white level, which means all the demonstrations you've done from then on in were lies. You think about that when you said that statement. So anytime any of you make a statement about the screens blend in together, you're basically just saying that he just lied in his demonstration by saying our screen paint was so dark you couldn't see it. So how is it possible that they can blend together if our screen pulls out an image so dark that you can't see the screen? You gotta think before you speak. You really do. Very important to think before you speak. So they pull the same bright level. That is a solid red color on a black screen versus a UB mix. Solid red, no mixed colors, no camouflage, one solid red color. Are they the same color now? Look how beautiful and deep red on that black technology. Now look at it, look on the UB mix. Are they the same color? I'm not asking my, my customers, no. I'm asking the crow boys. If you're there, come on in. I'm not going to block you. I want you to come and have a talk with me. That's all I want you to do. Just come and have a talk with me. We'll wait a couple of minutes and see if any of them come in. They're not going to come in the room. Excuse me. They're going to stay away. Would you like for me to change your color? Maybe you, the UV mix may change and give you the proper color. This is why you're asked to calibrate your projector because you can't pour proper color. That's a beautiful red, isn't it? Look how beautiful and rich that red is. Good gracious. I've never really stared at the red on my screens before. And I'm too busy doing other things. I've never really stared at it. Look how deep red that is. Look how deep red that is. So here's the thing. When you saw the demonstration with the fish, right, moving back and forth, it's kind of like your eyes are playing tricks on you, right? So you think you're actually seeing red. You're not seeing red. You're seeing washed levels of red. Now, if I show you the solid color red itself by itself with no distractions whatsoever, now you're seeing what you're supposed to be seeing. So your eyes are seeing correctly. Just like when you watch demonstrations with dark gray screens, or like I say, even my dark gray screens cannot pull 100% contrast level. I told you that. That's why we did them all together. Only a black screen can pull 100% contrast. So I tell you that when you're watching these demonstrations, uh, especially with some of these screens like this, and you, then they turn the lights out, you think you're actually seeing black. You're not seeing black. You're seeing shades of darker gray. That's what you're seeing. 
So when you're watching red on these screens, you think you're seeing red. No, no, no. You're seeing different shades of, of red, not the actual color red. And if you can't do that in a fully lit environment without your screen washing out, then there's a problem there. If you notice that even with the uh, Eclipse, and Eclipse is a very black, like very, that's a black, but it's a very dark gray screen. I was able to watch the movies off of that outside at around, we got the demonstrations to prove it, outside at around 12 feet back on a thousand lumen projector with no problem. Even did the color code combination outside too. All right, let's get off of that one right there. Curve boys are not going to pop in and they're not going to speak and they're not going to talk today. So that's how the one came in and made a comment and he made it, he, re he didn't reply back. So they automatically know they're not going to speak. Okay, blue. Let's bring up the color blue. We're going to put the look at the color blue. We're just going to stare at that. And break down these colors for you so you can see exactly what you're supposed to be seeing. So there we are with blue. Deep dark blue in our technology. Faded, washed out, looks like a sky blue. That's a dark blue. All right. Okay, 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 okay. Let's try a one hour orange screen. Okay, ain't working out too well for the UV. It's sunny. It's not. All right, let's bring out, uh, let's see what else we got here. We got a whole bunch of colors here. Let's bring out this one right here. That's a violet. It's a 4,000 lumen projector. You should not have a problem producing color on a 4,000 lumen projector. Let's go get, um, let's go bring up the dark green. We haven't done the dark green. We did dark green, but we haven't done it. Dark green. We a commercial. Uh, yeah, it, it dropped before the demonstration could start. Let's go back up. Let's go back up again. Back up, right in the center of the screen. So it's supposed to have as dark as contrast as our screens. Like I said, you're not gonna match a black screen on any level. All right, it should do better on gray because the screen literally is gray. Our screen is black. So let's put up a gray screen. Now that's supposed to be dark gray. Notice how the color all looks the same on the in the UV. Let's go over to um, white. We have to do white. Now I should do very well in white. It should be the point of a very good white level. There we go. You got one little win. It pulls up white level. But there's your problem right there. The screen pulls out a white level, but the problem you have here is that the white levels may be a little too high on the screen, and therefore that's why the other colors look faded and washed out. It's not pulling contrast. No blues, no greens, no reds. So equivalence, it's almost like having a white screen. So if the white levels are that high, then that means it would have no ability, it should be able to produce a brighter image when it comes to other screens, right? Let me see, when it comes to other colors. Let's go with, um, let's go with the, uh, okay, 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 okay. Interesting, isn't it? 
they pulled up a white level when you saw the all solid white level, right? But how come basically when we're doing this demonstration, our black screen is producing a very high white level? Now this was the demonstration that was done on my product, right? I want you to look at the reds when they come up. I showed you the solid red background. That's the reason why I showed you that because when the reds come up on the screen, they're faded, as you can see. See where the reds come up faded? This is the exact same demonstration that was supposed to be done side by side. And that's why we did all the demonstrations because then again, like I said, I had to do those demonstrations on our black silver so we can get it all out of the way, nip it out of the butt, because we know he's going to do the demonstration anyway on the gray screen. So let's do it for him, and we'll do it the proper way, how it should be done. Now, as you can see right there, we're able to produce brighter colors even on our gray technology versus his technology. And the screen paints are not even the same color. I got different to say they're both gray, or right, different silver, but they're not even both gray. And we're still producing, his screen actually is darker than our screen. So this is where it gets interesting because here our technology is darker, producing a bright white level, uh, deeper colors and so forth. But, a minute. Producing much deeper colors because the screen is black, producing very nice white levels. But when we come to the gray screen over here, when it comes to colors, we're producing much more brighter colors than his screen. His screen's coming a lot more darker. And the screen's darker than us. The screens can't pull white light. Well, not enough. So 
The Crow Boys, you are welcome in the room. You're welcome. I do want you to sit down and watch this demonstration with me. We can all sit here together and watch it together. Silver, yeah, I can mimic a black silver easy. See the hourglass right here? This is supposed to be black. Reds are faded right there. Look at the reflection off the glass and the reflection off the glass when it comes to the UP mix. You have to understand, this, this doesn't, I love doing this kind of work. I love it. To be able to show somebody how it's properly done, to basically show our technology versus somebody else's technology, I love it. Okay, let's go grab, let's see. Something has to be done. Everything something has to be done is work. Star, let's go with a star night screen. I'm gonna do a star. Star night uh, sky. So we're going to do a star night sky. That's too easy. Okay, this will work better. We're going to do a star night sky. Go a bit darker. Now you see the water cascading and moving. You can see the water right here, crystal clear. See the water where it's cascading and moving. It'll show the water. Yeah, they'll show the water. You can see the water moving. But when it comes to the contrast levels, there's no contrast over there. The screen can't pull a black level. That's why you're just seeing the water. You're not seeing the background and the detail in the water. That's interesting, isn't it? Let's see what else we got here. Let's go over here. We're going to put this right back in the center. Where it belongs on top of them where the mountains are. Do this with lights on. Any screen is going to react the same way. It doesn't have that contrast level. It's just going to react the same way.
I'm definitely going to put that on the ceiling. That's not supposed to be tan. Oh, I said that a trash truck? I keep forgetting. I gotta put out trash today. Or I guess it's tomorrow. Tomorrow will be the day the trash comes out. Let's see. Well, we definitely not pulling. It's not pulling up anything at all. We got red levels are not pulling high enough. Let's see. Who does this one? Background is supposed to remain black at all times. If I can get it in portrait mode, that'd be nice. Today, be nice on the ceiling. I'm definitely putting that on the ceiling. I'm definitely putting that on the ceiling. That would be hot on the ceiling. It's not pulling up his oranges correctly either. That's not coming up either. All right, so let's go in and let's bring up uh, uh, OG Foods. I'll bring that up again. Let's bring it up. Let's see. We did that one already. Let's see. That one already. Hmm. There's a red faded. Black faded. 
Anything that comes up gray is not pull in contrast or proper color. Keep in mind, now the screens do the same thing too. Great seven five D. The gray screen or black match a black screen. That's it. That's the whole bottom line. That's in color. They just are. White levels, like I said, they're fair and white levels. My white levels on my technology are extremely good. But there's no way in the world that uh, you're going to get a screen to be able to match that, that technology. And no way that's going to happen. I don't think the fellow understood what he was saying when he sat there and said, I don't think he thought what he said when he sat there and said that, uh, oh, so your screen, he's he's blending into your screen. You're blend well, I guess he said it. How do you say he said, uh, he's blending into your screen. So if that's the case and my screen's black, he should have thought about that before he said it because you just admitted that he was doing false demonstrations because how is our technology supposed to be dark on his end where y'all can't see it, but yet his screen is blending in on our screen, on our end. That means our technology is not dark like that. It has really produced white light. See how his colors are off when it comes to the red? They can't, they can't produce color. That's why you got to calibrate your projectors. That's why they constantly tell you to calibrate your projector. Because you have to. Your colors aren't coming up right. It's not picking up certain colors. That's what I tell you to get to calibrate your projector. I've never told you to calibrate a projector in any of my videos. Why would you need to? There's no point. You wouldn't have to calibrate any colors. If your projector was producing the right proper colors, you wouldn't have to do that. All right, so we got this one right here launching on, we got this one over here launching on when we're launching this bad boy, uh, the first, when it launches one of the first. This one's going for around, since I said it's a mid-level class screen, so since it's a mid-level class screen, we are going to basically uh, market it off a little cheaper than the rest of the paints. These are high class screens because they're high class screens because they're darker screens. And this is the first time he's striking this screen over here with a um, with a um, with a uh, four thousand inch projector, which I usually haven't done. I usually use low end projectors. Um, also, too, yeah, you can use them with um, with six hundred lumen projectors, but you also have one over here. Too. I'll be doing that demonstration later on today. There we go. Yeah, they're coming off. They're going to start coming off one by one. Like I said, this is not worth my time because I told you from the door. Side by side demonstration. She's one of the black strings that people are doing.
So the black screen is capable of causing, of doing that. You going against a gray screen would be a bad idea. A very bad idea. Especially if we developed it, would be a bad idea. Because now you're talking about an element that basically will not only go toe to toe with you, but because it is on your platform. Black screens are not on your platform on any way whatsoever. That's why I was trying to show you in a demonstration. When I said that I was trying to spare you and just show you the demonstration on the smaller screen, if I had did that demonstration on that big screen like I just did now, you would have saw the big results on why we tell you black technology is far more superior screens. This is what I was trying to spare you not to see. Because I'm not going to sit here and tiptoe the, uh, the demonstration. I'm going to show you everything thoroughly and by the book. I'm going to show you different sample sheets. I'm going to show you different color patterns. I'm going to show you white levels. I'm not going to shy away from white levels. You've never known me in a demonstration to ever shy away from white levels when it comes to a black screen. Never. I'll show you the whole nine yards. This one sitting from the projector. We can swap out different projectors the whole nine yards. Take it outside. Whatever. You know I'm going to be thorough about it. When I do my demonstrations, that's why I can do a demonstration a day. Mark my words, I can walk through my entire house with every last projector on and every last room will be well lit. And I'll do the whole demonstration without turning out one light. I can do that easily because our technology is designed to do that because what we put it through. So that's why when I did that side by side, I was trying to give you an understanding that, and I'll throw your script in, I'll mimic your screen just like that. I'll blend right into your screen, but I'll pull a contrast level and I'll watch your screen fail. So basically, it kind of puts it out there where if you do a demonstration showing our technology, just like the guy who came in and said, he made the statement, so the UP mix is disappearing with your mix. He just stated that. That doesn't bother me because by him saying that, if your screen paint is lighter than mine and it blended into a black screen, it just proves that all that time that you were going out spreading vicious rumors by saying that, hey, look, his technology is so dark possible that he can see that both of them are blended in if our technology was that dark which means you were falsifying your demonstrations you gotta think before you speak because you would see a massive difference but what he didn't understand is when he watched the demonstration you're watching not two black screens not two gray screen a gray and a black screen next to each other which means that that black screen is able to mimic into that gray screen, that means the white levels are high enough. I didn't think about that one either. So that's why Mr. Uh, Jock Guy didn't reply back when I asked him the question. He didn't reply back. I asked him a simple question. If they're both the same, how can I put it on contrast? My screen only pulls black and his doesn't. Never replied back. And if that's the case, if both screens blend together, then how is it possible that our screens are so dark that you can't see them? Because his screen's so dark, his screen, you can see his screen, and you can see my screen, and if you both see them together, then where did the rumor start that our technology was so dark that you couldn't see the screen? I could have been a lawyer, you know that? Nah, too lazy, I couldn't read all that paperwork, just too much paperwork, too much paperwork! A friend of mine, she's an attorney. And I look at the paperwork that she was like, good gracious, you feed through this every day, stacks of files, like stacks of files up there on her desk. And she's like, no, it's like easy, like I really, I really enjoy it. They must be some serious readers, man. They must read a lot of novels and a lot of books, man, because, man, a few pages of that, man, I would have opened up the window and took a jump. <laughs> it's never in the world. Let me get my whatchamacallit to work here for a minute. My Wi-Fi is acting a little buggy, so let's get this one working real quick. Let's see what's going on here. That's all, you know. And that's why I did all the other demonstrations. Because it's not just about his screen paint. It's about basically doing demonstrations against these high-end screen screens sitting in the middle of a gray screen that we developed. That screen right there for 100 inch would cost you in the price range of somewhere around four to five thousand four to five thousand dollars. And as I showed you in the demonstration, they don't work with ultra short throws, which I'm pretty sure they tell you that when you buy the screen, it doesn't work with ultra short throw. But that is a five now you're talking about saving people uh, uh hundreds of dollars. We save them thousands of dollars. That's a five thousand dollar screen sitting there. Do you know how much it costs for that screen paint for one quart? Because it's a mid-level screen, we market it at $89. $89, $5,000. 
89000 $89,000, $5,000. Think about it. I can build me a, a whole entire theater system for probably about under, I can do it for under 600 bucks. And I can do it on a crappy projector that would make a projector that's 4K on a gray screen look like crap. Oh, well, I forgot. I was supposed to be going online and buying me another projector. Forgot all about that, too. I get that done. I'm supposed to be buying me another projector. So that's the whole purpose. You don't have to spend all this money. You have to buy all this money for expensive screen and all this stuff and blow stuff. And, oh, who wants to deal with that nonsense? I don't. I want to turn my screen on and be done with it. See like this? See how my screen is here? Turn it on and be done with it. No ambient light rejection technology. No worrying about whether the lights in the environment are going to fade my screen or the windows are going to wash out or none of that nonsense. Just want to turn my screen on and be done with it. Feedback sits in a bit of windows. I can just come over here if I want to play. Oh, I've been playing that freaking game called. I'm addicted to it. I love it so much. I'll tell you about that later. Grab my controller right here. Turn my projector on 18 feet. Put on my PS4. Watch TV. I can watch TV at eight and nine o'clock in the evening. Eight o'clock in the, eight o'clock in the morning. I can sit here and watch TV with all these windows around my screen. See that image getting brighter. There you go. That's the way it's supposed to be. That's just the way it's supposed to be. And it's not supposed to cost you an arm and a leg. Like I said, I met this guy over in Facebook. He had an amazing gaming setup. It was beautiful. But the thing about it, he had all these displays on bobbleheads. Oh, he had so many bobbleheads. So many. Bobble hit statues. He had a giant Batman statue. It was like six feet tall. Giant. I don't know where he got that thing from. I've seen a few of them at these freaking um, um, Comic-Con conventions. He had a couple of them in there. They were huge, massive statues. The Hulk was humongous. So anyway, all these beautiful freaking uh, 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 collectibles throughout his entire gaming setup. But the minute he turned that projector off because he couldn't see the screen, I see he had the screen on, and I saw the Xbox symbol was faded out. You could barely see the little symbol in the middle, the Xbox symbol in the middle. But he was showing off all his stuff. And I was talking to him. I said, yo, I want to show you something real quick. So I show him my 135-inch screen upstairs on the Xbox with all the lights on. And put out a few of my things. Not nothing on his level, but a few of my things. So he looked, I can see all my stuff and I can game on the screen. So I was gaming on the screen. He was watching a game on the screen. He was like, what the heck is that stuff? And I said, oh, that's a black technology we developed. Showed him the screen, the projector off. Got to order that quick. Because what's the point of having all those collectibles if no one's going to see them because you're sitting in the dark because you're afraid the screen's going to wash out on you? That's what you want. You know, people don't want people to understand. People don't want to spend a lot of money for a projector. They definitely don't want to spend a lot of money for a screen. You know what I mean? They don't want to spend all this money. And they want to be able to come from the projector. They don't want to be calibrating or interlining all that nonsense. They don't want to go through all that. Just want to sit up and be done with it. That's what they want. Can't figure out what to paint it on. I got a 100-inch projection screen upstairs in my room. That it's a $68 eBay screen that turned into a jet black screen. And I used it to be the $3,000 projection screen in a demonstration. No, I'm gonna spend a lot of money, especially in this decade and time right now with the way things are going. You know what I mean? With money and all for some people, you know what I mean? They still want to enjoy have something nice. Someone else spend a lot of money doing it. See how the contrast levels that screen can pull up. That's next to a $5,000 screen right there.
That's why I said I don't. I don't. When you when you do demonstrations, it don't bother me because I know what my stuff is designed to do. That is a fourteen hundred dollar, thirteen to fourteen hundred dollar elite. Uh, um, great number five. $3,000 Dark Star 9. Now you might sit there and go, Ken, that's not fair. That's 4,000 lumens. Well, guess what? We can switch it over to 1,000 lumens right now. I got no problem with doing this because I'm not, people get comfortable with the projector. They gotta have a high power projector because they get comfortable with it. I have a bag. Don't keep going. No, I'm a bad. No, I'm a bad. No, I'm bad. I have a few of them that are pretty good. That are pretty nice people. They're pretty nice people. They just basically been led down the wrong path. That's all. But I, I've had a few of them, and they're pretty nice people. But I had a guy came here by the name of Big Chef, and Big Chef went into this huge rant about basically. I was just trying to explain to ask him a question about how it's possible that the screens producing such high bright colors, and all the screens are brighter than my screen. And he wouldn't answer the question. So he went into this freaking adolescent rant. And then after that, he said, well, you're using a 4,000 lumen projector. And I was like, man, you should have never said that. All the old projectors, low lumen projectors I test this stuff on, I went upstairs and I said, which one you want? Which one you want? Three on the table, which one you want? He didn't want to pick, he didn't want to say anything. So I brought down a 1,000 lumen projector, hooked it up and did the same thing. Then he just went to this huge rant and then that was the end of it. Kind of reminds me, you ever remember Frosty the Snowman where he wanted to get his hat back and he was rolling down the hill and you see his legs kicking up in the air, he was all upset. Kind of reminded me of that. And we felt the train, we felt the train. That reminded me of that episode when he was just jumping up and down. You see him in the sunrise, he's jumping up, kicking his feet in the air. Kind of reminded me of that. I asked you, I wasn't going to block you from the door because then I got accused of blocking crew boys left and right. Now I'll give you a chance to basically explain how the technology is doing this. And they can't do that. Now, if they, if they sit there and say, well, I really don't have an answer, then that's the end of it. Ain't no point in me grilling them any farther because the man just said, you know, no. But when they keep going on and on and on with all these different excuses and stuff, one guy was saying, well, the screen is not black, it's gray, and I had to take the screen and throw it against the other screen. So look, it's not black, it's gray. The eclipse are gray, but they look black. But you're saying my screen is black, but it looks gray. Which one is it? Tell me. Make your brain explode. I'll tell you something to have you thinking about. No, 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 I better not, I better not. They have these riddles that there's no answer to them whatsoever. They're just strictly designed to mess with your head all day. I know a couple of them. But there's one particular one that's pretty bad. It is really, really bad. But I'm not going to tell you what it is. But it's actually, has, there's no answer to it. It's just literally designed to just mess with your head all day. To have you thinking about it all day. But I wouldn't tell you that. Because you'd be thinking about it all day. <laughs> and then you'll be hating me over it. You'll be hating me over it. But yeah, they're designed to screw your head up. Now you would think about it all day. And you just sit there and ponder how it's done. But there's there's no there's no answer to how to do it. There isn't. Just made to screw your head up, that's all. You don't want that. Nobody wants that. Alright, so we're gonna use our Sony. Or Sony projector. I like these a thousand lumens. I gotta get another one of these. So I have the thousand lumen. I had the, um, they made a thousand, they made an eight hundred, and they made a nine hundred. I want to get all of them. I love these projectors. These projectors are fantastic, and, they, and they're amazing on a screen paint. Somebody was asking me where to get them from. You can find them on eBay. There, there's a bunch of them on eBay, but you can find them on eBay. Um, and they're usually somewhere around, depending on how much stuff they come with. Mine came with the bag, it came with all the adapters and the manual and drivers and all this stuff that came with it. So mine was like a hundred bucks, right? One of them was a hundred bucks. Then I got one for 75, it came with everything. So they're around like a hundred bucks and down, but they're fantastic projectors. And they're Sony's. You know, they're really good projectors. I love them. I'm, I'm gonna get I want it's another one I saw. Now that one right there, that's the six hundred lumen one right there. This is a thousand lumen. They got another one on this eight, which I'm hunting for right now. I've seen somebody post one, but I don't know if somebody grabbed it. I grabbed it already. If they didn't grab it, I'm buying it. 
So we're doing thousand lumens. I don't know if this is the one that had the problem with the Chromecast. One of these had a problem adapting to the Chromecast. If it loads the Chromecast twice, it's this one. I gotta disconnect the other one. Here, and plug it in there. We can't get a picture. Let me see if we can grab it from here. Usually, sometimes it's the adapters may have that problem. Is this disconnected? Oh, it's disconnected. It's not okay, cool. I'm just grab this up in the back of my projector. The ceiling projector, yep. When I get that flash like that, that lets me know that that adapter may not be working too well. So we'll grab another one. That's another thing. So I need to go to Best Buy, get online, and order me some extra Chromecasters. I used to have six or seven of them, but I kept stepping on them and breaking them like, like a dummy. Damaging my Chromecasters. So let's see if this one will run. This one should. I don't have to do a spray on demonstration. If somebody wants me to spray on demonstration, I have to do one of those too. I gotta actually do that 12 black has to be sprayed on because the last time I did that demonstration, I didn't spray it on, I rolled it on. But that screen has to be sprayed on. I need to do another huge sheet of plexiglass of that black technology. And I might change out my motorized projection screen now. My motorized projection screen in the office is a white, so it looks like a white casing. But I want to change that for all black. I'm just going to change it for all black screen. And convert that into all black technology would look sick. That would look sick in all black. All right. All right. So we have a thousand lumens hooked up. Let's grab ourselves a video. Yeah, this is wrong. That Chromecast is going to have to be. Uh, I'm going to have to get another one. All right, this one has to be added to. Yep, it's added to. And that's a thousand lumens. The technology has that coating in it, which is why the paint looks so weird. So it has a coating in it. We call it LLL enhancement technology, but it's actually called low lumen enhancement technology. It allows you to be able to use lower entry level projectors to produce a much higher and brighter image. As you can see right next to the 4000 lumen Chrissy, which is displaying on the other screen. And here's the other screen right there displaying the fish. So those of you who have that, I got a lot of emails about people who have those LG Sunbeam projectors. Uh, somebody was asking me about 600 lumens. Now keep in mind the minimum we have on the website for the minimum requirement is actually 800, but we will try six today, which uh, that's why I brought that downstairs see what happens so that's a thousand lumens right there Now you can see the projector is overlapping because you can see some of the image right there on the ceiling as you can see so we don't have it made to fit perfectly so the image comes up much more. That's another trick you have to watch out for too. Um, when they use low lumen projectors such as the one I'm using in the demonstration, they will make sure it fits the screen correctly and they will keep the screen at a small screen. That means by keeping the screen at a small screen and having the image fit right in there, that means the screen, the pixelations are pushed much more tighter together, which will give you a much sharper and brighter image. That's why, and also too, you have to look at the distance on where the projector is sitting too. So where my projector is sitting, uh, let me see, where are we at? I gotta bring it back to where it needs to be at. We are around, let me show my screens here so you guys see this. 
measuring tapes here. So we are around blah, 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 about eight feet, nine feet and some change for where the projector is sitting. And I'll go back so I can show you where the measuring tape is at. You see, see where the measuring tape is at? It's always going to be lined with the front of the projector, not the back of the projector. The aluminums don't start at the back, they start at the front. I see people doing that too. They make it seem like the projector is at a longer distance throw when it really isn't. You can't put the measuring tape behind the back of the projector because the start, let me count this and start there. It starts from the front. And see how dark the black levels are coming up. See how the reds fade? Yeah, that right there. I'm getting act right. Go back here for a minute. Let me show you something. You see how the reds fade? How they wash out? Because there's no contrast in that screen, right? Those are the high professional screens. Now we we'll take the UV mix. It doesn't pick up certain. Some colors it can pick up, but when it comes to red, it has a bit of a difficult time with that one. It's amazing how I press these screens onto my screen, I keep falling off, but the minute I basically try to grab one of them off, they won't move. Okay, so let's see if we can mimic the screen at a thousand lumens. Yeah, we're mimicking this tech edit. And quite frankly, yeah, we just mimic this tech at a thousand lumens. That's good to know. So here's the problem we have here. When we hit this with 4,000 lumens, this red couldn't pick up. So for some reason, this has a problem of adjusting to projectors of 4,000 lumens or higher, probably higher than 1,000. Now watch, we'll do the same demonstration here. That's at 1,000 lumens. Now, watch this, which is interesting. I'm going to come in and bring in, I want to see something that I have to see on a solid color. Red. No, no flowers, man. It's a flowers. I want red. Red, red, red. Straight red. We need that. That's what we need to see. Straight red. That's what I need to see. I just saw something really interesting there. All right, we're gonna do straight solid red. I'm gonna see something for a minute. I wanna see if the image is being camouflaged or if it's producing a solid red 1,000 lumens. That's what I wanna see. So what happens if we hit it with something bigger? Too much white light. Why these demonstrations are important. I have to be to see what we're looking at here. Oh, we got two chrome patches down here. I forgot. That's kind of twist up in the area. I don't want it to be at, but whatever. Let's see, let's see, let's see. All right. And this one off. That's quite red. Now we're putting 
4,000 newtons. Let's see how it reacts with 4,000 newtons. Calibrating the projector. Chromecast today. I don't want to see this. I want to see this. Let's go to, uh, no, we're in attic? You're in attic. I want to see this. Thought so. I know I was right. So that's interesting. That is really interesting. All right. So here's the deal. I knew I saw something weird or something interesting when I was looking at it. The UB mix can. The heck is that? Wait for a minute. Out. So that was my projector going down for a minute. All right, so uh, the UB mix, which is interesting, um, the problem, one of the problems it has is thousand lumens, it'll pick up a red color, right? When you hit it with anything higher than that, the color will fade because there's too much light hitting the, hitting the screen. So somewhere along the line, too bright of an image from a projector at 4,000 lumens, anywhere from three, we're gonna check it out, 3,000 lumens, 2,500 lumens, and see if it reacts the same way. Because the image came up much better when the projector was dimmer. When the projector was with lower, uh, lower lumens of light, it came up much better. When I hit it with the 4,000 lumen projector, the image came up bland. So maybe it does have a problem reacting to higher end projectors. This is probably where the calibration of that nonsense comes from. Yep. Projector cutting off. You forget to do commercials on these ones. Oh, yeah, I'm happy with my results. We got a black screen that can blend your technology with no problem whatsoever. And this new stuff we have right here definitely pulls up brighter colors in your screen. You know, for some reason, this has a really hard time picking up red. I don't know why. Red on this, you hit this with red with a projector. We want to do a 2500 lumen laser projector we have downstairs and see how it reacts. Lasers can accurate color extremely well. So we're going to hit up a laser projector downstairs and see what happens. But other than that, this versus that black technology? Oh, no, 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 no. Take the black technology. I know against a platinum eclipse would put this a shame because platinum eclipse are so dark they could pass for a black screen. So there's no way in the world. You can't pull contrast, but this right here, this has already got you beat by color. That's the case. Nines produce insane color capabilities. So, like I said, the reason why some of these demonstrations are done, particularly with that screen, why we know he's going to pick it up. You know he's going to do the demonstration. So we're going to beat you to the punch. We're going to do all those demonstrations ahead of time for you. So by the time that launch day comes, we didn't already did them already in their life. And we throw by the book. Because if your demonstrations don't match ours, 
That means you did it incorrect. Now, hopefully we get a good day today because there's one test passed and not um, thousand lumen test outside. Oh, I forgot the 600 lumen projector. All right, hold on, let's get that one done too because I got to do 600 lumen projector because a customer has a projector of 600 lumens and he wants to know if the screen's going to pull up. I mean, heck, it pulled up on a, um, it pulled up on a, uh, whatchamacallit, on a, a knockoff projector, and that thing is way below 600 lumens. I mean, way, 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 way below 600 lumens. But, let's see. Come on, curiosity. You gotta know, we gotta know, we gotta know. Let's get these projectors out of here right now. Let's get these bad boys up and go. Let's pull out that 600 lumen Sony projector. See what we get. Ugh. Let's get all this up out of the way. Get my area a little better. This is still powering off. Let's grab a 600 lumen Sony projector, which we have. I'll give the model number at the bottom of it. The model number, oh, well, well, that one right here, the 1000 lumen is a VPL CS4. This is the CS2. So the CS2 is the one that does that one right now, because I have a few customers saying, well, what's the lowest we can go on it? I don't know. We're going to find out. All right. Uh, do we need that one? Nope. I need that one to work much better. And I need the adapter. This one right here, projectors using a VGA. Now, if you're interested in running, getting one of these projectors, keep in mind, they do not have HDMI ports on the back. Or for those of you who are curious how in the world I'm running a Chromecast through, this is what they look like on the interface right here. That's what you get right there. You want to get one of these babies right here. This will allow you to be able, the name of the company, this will allow you to be able to run your HDMI to the back of your um, projector. Keep in mind, sound will be ported through here, not the projector. And also, too, if you want a couple of extra HDMIs on the back of your projector, you want to convert those VGAs and HDMIs, you can do that, too. As a matter of fact, I'm going to have the PS4 upstairs on the 135 today because I want to see if I can run a DVI to HDMI on the back of it, which if I can do that, that means that basically gives me the option to do picture-in-picture -picture on my PS4, which means I can watch Netflix, because you know the 505 has picture-in-picture. -picture. I can watch Netflix, which I've seen some really cool Japanese anime on there I'm going to start getting into, and I can actually rock my PS4 at the same time. Yes, people, I would love to say PS5. I would love to say it, but guess what? Can't get one. I have the money to get one, but I can't get one because you know why? There's none. But you'll see them on eBay pretty soon. $5,000. That's what you'll see them for. $5,000. It happens every year. Come on, we should, we should be used to this by now. No one should really be getting upset over this because we do this every time they launch a new system. It's nothing new. We all know it's going to happen. They just don't learn from it. We just suffer from it. That's all. They did it with Dreamcast, they did it with N64, they did it with N64 in Japan. They do it every, every time. I think it's a marketing scheme, whatever. So basically, they make sure you're gonna buy the, um, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the, um, the system. But we all know we're gonna buy it, so why would you do that to begin with? I mean, if I didn't have enough of one supply, wouldn't you think the next time around I would make sure we had plenty of them for everybody? But I don't know, like I said, it's a marketing thing. I think it is, I really do. Because it happens every time. I guarantee you, mark my words, next system that comes out, it'll be the same thing again. Which, which is funny, because you're something really strange. When they bring out the original system, you have to go on a waiting list to get one. And then certain stores will only carry a certain amount, so you have to make sure you actually can get yours, because I went through that with the Xbox 360. But it's funny when the system's in circulation and everybody can get their hands on it, they start bringing out these little size systems like this has two... two Two terabytes and four terabytes. You remember when Xbox 360 did it? They came out with a system, which is the regular arcade, um, the uh, Xbox 360, which was the uh, the core, and then they came out with the Pro, and then they came out with the arcade, and then they came out with the Residential Evil edition, and the Gears of War edition, and the Halo edition, which had that funny kind of olive green design with that kind of orange with it. Remember all those they came out with? Remember all those? They had no problem getting those out the door. They had plenty of them to get out the door. Then you had the slim version. They always bring out a slim version. You know, that's definitely going to come. You know what I mean, there always different versions of it that they can pump out. And maybe they're saying, okay, well, we can't get these particular parts because they're hard to get. Well, if these parts are hard to get 
and you know you're going to go through that nonsense, but your customers got to go through that nonsense, make sure you build a machine with parts that you can get your hands on so everybody can have one. But that's the reason why my gaming room will be done, and I will not have a PS5 or an Xbox X series up there because can't get one. You know? They're just sold out everywhere. And who are these people that are getting this information from the door that's buying them that fast? That's what I would like to know. I need to be friends with them. Like, hey, Ken, I've got this information. Like, the system's going to be coming out, like, next week. Like, you might want to put your pre-order in. I got connections. Because you know people that work at GameStop. I know people that work at GameStop. They get their pre-orders first for anybody else. They do. They do. I've watched them do it. And I used to have friends at GameStop, and I got a pre-order. That's why I got my pre-order for my PS, I think PS4. I had it when it first launched because I knew somebody over there, and they set me up with the, with the uh, with the pre-order. They ordered an extra um, an extra uh, unit for display, but it was extra for me. Yep. But I'm not friends with anybody at GameStop anymore, so those connections are going. Where the freak did my Switch Mukong go to? I'm looking for the adapter, which I have replaced somewhere or put somewhere. Oh, here it is. I never took it off the other projector. So, yeah. I mean, you'd think by now, you know, they would have learned. Just stock up and have plenty of it available. I'm going to be shocked if this thing does 4K. I really am. I'm really going to be shocked. Because it's going to be pretty salty. But those of you who went out and bought 4K TVs and 4K projectors, we get this thing home and find out it's not reading native 4K. That's going to suck. Because the Scorpion doesn't read native 4K. Because if it read native 4K, it would read in the console. Uh, PS2 is running up to 1080p. We all know that. All right. So let's fire on the 600 lumen projector. Let's see what time is it? I need to eat something. Uh, it's going to take a while. This is an old projector. 1999. Let me see if we got this. That's my screen size. We know that. And that's my focus right there. Bring it back a little bit there. That's better. See. Do we have a? Uh... There we go. Here we are, 600 lumens. I had to do this on 600 lumens because the customer asked for 600 lumens and they're usually, the um, specification for these projectors are around at eight. I haven't responded back to his email yet because I have to do it on 600 lumens to see how proper the picture is gonna come up. So keep in mind, I have to have a, um, a proof that it actually works. Can't just tell me. So this I have a 600, and he's using a 600 lumen ultra short throw. We're doing it on a long throw, so this is gonna be a cakewalk for the screen because this projector is literally gonna be kissing the screen. So let me see. We can bring this back a little bit more to around nine feet. All right, so projector sits here. And we are at around, sorry about that, to make anybody stick here. I'm sorry if you got my feet in the way. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. We are around nine feet from the screen. So nine feet from the screen, fully lit environment, 
600 moments. Woohoo! Yeah! Boop, boop, boop! I'm happy. That made me happy. Extra happy! And they're going to use an ultra short throw. So I guess, eh, whatever, it's, it's going to work either way. Lights out. Lights on. Yeah, it's good. Because keep in mind, think about it. If we're doing a thousand lumens outside at 13 feet back at six o'clock in the evening, we're probably hitting the screen with around between 400, 400 lumens at the most. There's no way in the world that screen is traveling, lumens is traveling from 13 feet outside at six o'clock in the evening and hitting the screen and still maintaining a thousand lumens by the time it reaches destination to the screen. Oh no, that's not happening. It's probably hitting the screen probably at around between maybe three or four hundred, three or four, probably hundred lumens at the most. It's making contact with the screen. But I guarantee it lost a ton of, of lumens before it made it. They're doing with 5,000, 6,000, 7,000 lumens, 10,000 lumens, because that's enough lumens to kill and have enough lumens to make contact with the screen. On our end, we're using a thousand lumens because we know it's going to have to fight to make it to that screen. It's going to have to fight. And by the time it makes it to that screen, that screen is going to produce the most, most powerful gain to be able to get that image to pull up, especially when it comes to black contrast. That's the excitement I get from it. That's the adrenaline rush I get. And seeing this projector do this at nine feet back at 600 lumens in a fully lit environment. Ooh, yes. That's why we do the demonstrations outside. That's why. Ooh, man, I love this kind of work. I do, I love it, 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 I love it. Usually I'm saying this kind of stuff, I'm off camera. I'm I gotta finish the arcade. Let's go upstairs for a minute, okay? Show you what I'm working on, right? Show you what I'm working on. I just got right up out of bed, like, boop, upstairs. Do, 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 do. All right, people. Yeah, that's going back. I finally got the shipping label from them, so that's gonna be out of here pretty soon. All right, so I had to expand the screen a little bit, right? I had to expand it just a little bit because I got to put the frame around it right there. So I had to expand the actual screen itself a little bit more than that way. My screen here. It all fits together. Can you take it apart? Like I can, I can dismantle and take the whole thing apart. It's all Velcro together. It's all Velcro, and I can pull it apart, take like a Lego system. So that's how I do it. So when I move, I can take it with me, like a puzzle. So I can pull the whole thing apart, put the whole thing back together again. Um, now this is not done yet. This is the first stage of it. Um, once it's all carboarded, in, and I told you I have to build two. Um, Two uh, stands here and here with a piece of wood. I need those to stand straight up from right there. So when I build the arcade um, control panel in there, it's going to be like a holding uh, place for my jamming stick. So I'm getting myself a nice huge uh, arcade uh, stick, and that will fit right up there on top, but also decorate the whole entire design. And it'll be a holder for my arcade stick. So keep in mind, when I put that cardboard case in here and here, when I build it in, it's going to be kind of weak, so that's why I'm building a wooden stand. It's going to come up from the floor, and it's going to attach to the bottom of that, and that's going to hold it. Actually, that wooden stand is going to be holding the arcade system. Up. It's going to be holding the uh, supporting it. So all that's going to be covered up. Now, the theme I decided to go with this, I'm going with a nuclear kind of hazard zone. So I ordered some glow-in-the-dark UV paints, some official uh, nuclear stickers and stuff like that. Also got blue lighting that's going to go around the side of it. And I got one of those stands that says caution stand here. You know what I mean? Right there. It's going to be pretty cool when I get done with it. A lot of LED lights and stuff like that. So what's going into this little screen right here? Well, Rain's connected to that. I have a Dreamcast coming in, GameCube. I got plenty of GameCube games from here. I think I'm good. I just want to open up my original uh, systems. Um, and that's what we're going to be running through this. Now, I'm going to have to install speakers in here, so I'm going to put a sound bar and a sub in there because usually when you're playing arcade games, the sound comes from here and not from back there or around there. So I'm going to put speakers in there. So that's going to be pretty cool to stuff. So we're just about done. I just had to cut all the pieces out with cardboard, uh, double ply the cardboard so when I paint it with spray paint, it doesn't warp or bend, and then go out there and get black primer and cover everything, like literally everything. 
So I still have one panel here to finish, one panel there to finish, and then the top area, which I can't do yet until I build a little scaffold. And I have to build all that and get the whatever, you know what I mean? You'll see when I'm done with it, it's a lot of work. That's all, but almost done, almost done. And then over here, we have the dun, 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 135 inch black screen. Yes, it's looking good in here. So this is the part I like the most. All right, so I'll show you those you haven't seen it already. And if I can remember where my remote controls, remote controls are on my LED lights. There are LED lights that run throughout this whole entire area. Okay, here is that kind of it. Let's turn this one off. This is fun. So at nighttime, you can't see the other two blades. It just spins around in this weird circle. If you stare at it long enough. And they all blend together. So out of curiosity, if anybody's wondering how in the world did I get lead lights on my ceiling, on my ceiling fan, without any cords coming down, they're battery powered. So this is what they look like right here. You can get them over on Amazon for around $7. You get about six feet of, of line with it. Here's the battery power right here. It does come with the USB on the other end for your lights. So I'm gonna show you the backpack in the back of it. I'll show you the lights itself if you're curious. So this right here plugs into this. This is the remote control that allows you to be to control it. That plugs into there. And then the other end, which we should have, let me see for a minute. Right there, there, and there. Right. Okay, okay, I got this right, okay. This right here, sorry about that. This right here, these two ends, sorry about that, we're actually moving all over the place. These right here plug in together, so that's for the remote control. And then to run the power, which runs from, oh, oh, wait, 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 I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. My mind's someplace else right now. All right, let me do this slowly. All right, I'm gonna do this slowly, so I'm gonna do this from the camera. All right, ouch, chairs are right behind me all the time. All right, battery pack is here. This three batteries going, right? On the end of your battery pack, you'll have a USB right there, right? Your USB plugs into here, like so. And then this right here is your remote control that remote controls all your lights that plugs into here. Like that. Boom, and that's it. And that's how you basically all battery powered. This is cool if you want to put this inside your car, which I advise you not to do because you will get pulled over by the cops uh, for having lights inside your car flashing. I don't know, probably, maybe, I don't know. But anyway, I wouldn't tempt it. Or basically, if you want to basically, uh, I don't know if you want to sew this into your clothes or not. I mean, it's battery powered. Why not? I mean, you figure out something weird to do with it. They do make it weatherproof. Do they make weatherproof versions of this too? So it's just a great place when you want to put lead lights somewhere without running a bunch of power cords, which I'm doing over here. But keep in mind, I need the power cords. So I'm not replacing this with batteries. So the reason why I have another set of those is because the gaming recliner that I ordered is going to have lead lights thrown all through it. And I was trying to figure out how I'm going to do this because the chair swivels around and I don't want this wire hanging behind me to snag it out. So um, that's where I found those right there, those battery powered ones. They actually work a lot better. And in here, which I have a lot of condition in here because that projector is pretty hot. This is, if you haven't seen it already, people, this is my 79 inch uh, portrait projection screen. And here is the black motorized projection screen coated with our technology du, 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 du. and my projector for that one sits right over there this one's operating right there okie dokie so i think i might do a demonstration today with everything on in the house running and just walk around the house yeah that's what i'm gonna do so then i've got breakfast with my name on it somewhere and i gotta go eat where is uh no control. Wow. All right, people. Now, I know I got a lot of hate for this, which I don't mind. I know I get a lot of dislikes for this kind of stuff. I get a lot of dislikes. I know, man, you got you to do demonstrations correctly, man. You don't do them correctly. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it, you're just it's pretty much cutting yourself short. You, you don't do them correctly. And no way this demonstration was not to basically come at him in a malicious, evil way, as the Crow Boys would want to say it. Simple demonstration, which I had other screens out there besides his. I did demonstrations on the performance of screens, but I just wanted to nip it in the butt before he even starts by doing the demonstrations with his product already. I would tell you right now, Crow, right from the door, the UB Mix 
is the only thing that you have where well, it's not going to go against a black screen. A black screen, basically, on it's, it's, the movie makes a black mix, it's not going to work at all. You see what that black screen did to it, so you don't want to go down that road. But with this great technology we developed, your your mix is um, it's okay. But I'm just saying that the thing about it is it's not going to. They don't even look gray when you look at them in the containers. When they come out of the containers, they got a they got a weird look to them. And then when we put it against your screen and put it against a black screen, your screen's darker than my screen, but yet my screen pulls a higher contrast and brighter colors in your screen. So that right there. So I mean, if you want to do a side by side or a fair demonstration. I'll ship you down a court for free. No problem. Because we already did the demonstrations for you. And I only want to do the demonstration for you. We got five people right now. One of them has a P1, just like your projector, that will be doing that demonstration also. So just so you know. But if I were you, I wouldn't do them side by side. Mm -mm. I really wouldn't. That's a bad idea. I'm just saying, make your product, enjoy it. Deal with your customer base as you always do. Don't go against that screen. I'm warning you. If it blends into your screen, and it will blend into your screen, if you're not going to do well by it. You're not. Because then we'll show you levels of that screen that we never showed you in a demonstration, and it'll take your screen and it'll drop it. Trust me. I'm just warning you ahead of time. I want you to do the demonstration. I want the technology to blend into yours. Because then I'm going to show you the other side of that technology that we didn't show on camera. And we're going to display that. And you'll see the level where that screen sits at for real. Then you're going to regret doing it. I don't show everything, like I said. Some things we keep a secret. So I haven't showed you the full potential of what that technology is designed to do. You're just seeing the lighter part of it all. Okie dokie. I'm tired. I got to go eat. And uh, hope you enjoyed the video demonstration. Uh, hit that dislike button. Because I know you are. So it doesn't bother me at all. Because I disabled that crap anyway. It doesn't bother me at all. You know, the demonstrations have to be done. Whether you all like it or not, they have to be done. That's it. Okay? Um, I'm rambling on. I'm hungry and tired. And I'm rambling on. I got to go eat. All right. God bless.